Uh, welcome to the 19th episode of the Game <laughs> Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash Seth Okage. Uh, today, I'm joined by the usual crew of Sarah, Corey, Blaine, as well as a special guest, longtime friend and supporter of the show, uh, Dominic. How are you doing, Dom? Hello there. Hey, I'm doing good. How is everyone? Mm. Well, tired. Eh. <laughs> my, my, okay. cat, my cat okay. threw up next to my head when I was trying to sleep, so there's that. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> cat cats suck <laughs> um so yeah today's gonna be a fun show it's gonna be all aboard the hype train all around um Choo-choo. we will try to keep it somewhat organized <laughs> but at the top of the show i just want to go to remind everyone to like comment subscribe on all the socials everyone's twitters are on screens please go ahead and support everyone there uh we stream game session pod live at 6 30 p.m pst on sundays uh the full podcast makes its way to podcast services and youtube with individual cut up segments made available later on uh on youtube as well i stream here on twitch games whenever i kind of feel like it as i said twitter is the best place to keep up to date with all of us and i also have a patreon now to help kind of fund the hosting services for the show um and i just want to give a big big thank you to both uh ramen nomad who's currently in the chat as well as my buddy sly for being the first two patrons on there so thank you um dom since you're new to the show do you want to go ahead and introduce who you are oh, okay, you just introduction okay I thought you were going to ask me like a serious question and I was not prepared for any pop quizzes. Uh, uh, what, what, <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? Dog? Uh, I got a lemon beagle, which is basically a mix of different types of breeds, but mainly beagle. What the fuck is a lemon beagle? I was about to say, did I just hear the word lemon correctly? Yes, lemon beagle. That was what they told us when we got them. Is it because it I has mean, a sour like disposition? I guess. I, I honestly never questioned them. <laughs> Anyway, I, mean, I can so, bring it in halfway through if you want. Yeah, but by, by all means, pets are more than welcome to be on screen. Is it awesome. is it because the dog is a sexually explicit fan fiction? Oh no, no, no! <laughs> don't, don't bring the dog into that. No, keep that. <laughs> I'm bonk. sorry. Keep bonk. that within the prison <laughs> of. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. Keep that in the prison. <laughs> So, Dom, who who are you? Uh, I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sarah's bad joke just made him forget his entire life history. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why I'm here. Oh my god. <laughs> um. So, hello there. I'm Dominic. Um. That's about it. I mean, I have my own YouTube channel, which is Dominic Rocha. That's me. I do uh, let's plays, um, podcast, and. Every now and then a short film, depending if I have the time. But that's basically it. I mean, if something comes up, I'll possibly bring it in. Who knows? Who knows? Awesome. I yeah. hope everyone goes out and goes and, and uh, supports you. But I know you personally from um, San Francisco State University, where we took a... I don't even remember the name of the class we took. Was it editing? We... Um, it was like at the it was, weird it was downtown our final semester, I believe. It was we took sound editing, and then we also had that um, on, on was it online media or something like that? Oh, you're like right. We, we we did have that class in common. What yeah. what classes were we in together? I honestly don't remember college. <laughs> I graduated, and that was it. Well, see, uh, I don't okay, remember no. high school. <laughs> I believe I feel we were in one of Hawkster's classes, possibly feature screenwriting. Oh, yeah, no, feature. Yes, I think so. That sounds familiar to me. Again, I don't remember. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> college and college is a blur. And that and that's okay. I dropped right. out of college. Yay! <laughs> Reach oh, throw. Yeah, indeed. Oh, I almost forgot. I left uh, one note for my, or a couple notes, but one very specifically I want to touch on before we get into the fun, excited news. Uh, fuck David Jaffe. Fuck John hey. to death. Fuck you. Hey! <laughs> Don't I say have. their names. That gives them power. He does no look question. like a troll anyway. Anyway. Um, Nobody knows who they are anyway. <laughs> Who wants to talk Pokemon? Um, two new Pokemon games were unveiled <laughs> as uh, as part of the latest Pokemon Direct, uh, with the first uh, game being being announced being a remake of the fourth generation titles Diamond and Pearl, uh, being remade into 
Brilliant Diamond, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as much as I think they thought, and uh, Shining Pearl. Uh, the second title was Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is an open world game set in a feudal time period of... Um, it, it, so it's the same region as Diamond and Pearl. It's the Sinnoh region, but within a feudal time period. Uh, according to Game Freak, the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games are set to be faithful recreations of the original titles, but with a chibi art style that kind of reminded me, at least, of um, of the Link's Awakening remake they did a year or two years ago, something like that. I think two years. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was, the um, it was pre-COVID, I know that for a fact. And uh, Legends Arceus is is opposed to be a uh, bit of a wild divergence from the mainline titles in that it's an unrestricted open world. It has stealth mechanics, uh, catching Pokemon without entering battles and more. And probably it's probably not like the most unique thing, but they're kind of um, shaking things up a little bit with having the three starter Pokemon be from different generations. So it's a Pokemon from the second, the fifth and the seventh with those specifically being uh, Cyndaquil, uh, Oshawott, and Rowlet, which are three of the best starters, uh, come at me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Legends Arceus is slated for 2000, sorry, uh, 2022, and uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are for later this year. So, panel of Pokemon enthusiasts, thoughts? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm... Control. I, okay. <laughs> you, go, you go on, Corey. You go on. Um, so, I, I mean, I... I, I uh... I was kind of stoked, uh, like for the for the idea of an open world Pokemon game. Um, if they, I mean, obviously it's still in development and it's not coming out or not, you know, coming out till next year. Um, and with open world games, sometimes they can start off kind of rocky and then and then end up being really good. Um, so if that's the case with this one, then I really really hope that they uh, not only restrict it to one region, but you know, open up the entire world of Pokemon to explore. Um, and then with the, with the remakes, um, like I understand people being all like bent out of shape because of the graphics or whatever, but I don't there, go. there hasn't, there hasn't been, uh, let me, <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> right right now, like no. I understand, but their reasons are not legitimate. Um, because not. because <laughs> <laughs> because it is a game that has always been and always will be geared towards children. And if you don't like it, then tough noodles. I think it's even more specific you know, than that. I think yeah. old I can... children, practically babies. Yes, I, th- I think even aside from like, that, it's that this franchise has been the exact same thing for fucking over twenty years, and expecting it to make some wild change from quality, like e- even based on the hardware, whatever. Um, it-, it is what it is. There- this is twenty years of precedence, and it's not going to break away from that. One people thing, that like it already thing, know what it is. The one thing that I'll also point out is that people are seemingly forgetting that the original Diamond and Pearl had a chibi art style, but in the twelve bit, was it eight bit? On the DS, and it, no, no, sixteen bit is Super Six- Nintendo, so I don't know what the DS was, but it was more well, like when you maybe when you looked at the Diamond and Pearl running on the DS, when you weren't in battles, everybody looked chibi anyway. When you go into battles, they have full character models, so they're well, basically well, just doing what they did in, in the original Diamond and Pearl. Well, let's go even go into that because, like one one favorite thing. I guess let's call it rhetoric. One favorite bit of rhetoric is, oh, but they always had these great animations on the 2D sprites, and now the animations of the 3D stuff doesn't look as good. I'm just like, have you actually gone back and looked yeah. at how these things are animated? Because they're like weird stop half frame like tweens almost. Well, and they're not. Some of them look fine. I'm not saying that they don't like. Some of them look weird for the time. Even some of them look better than others. But like. I don't know. Like people seem to just forget like what it was like to see as I think my boyfriend brought up a really good one, like one Pokemon where it was like a snake Pokemon. I don't remember which one where like just the head and the tail would kind of wiggle and animate, but nothing else would. And it was really jarring to look at. And like, even at the time for him, it was jarring. So like, or, or like what I watched a clip recently that was like everyone going, man, I'm this game looks sucks. I'm going to go play the, the old one. And it's literally a 54 second long clip of like, 
two attacks in a battle that feels like it's five hours. It's yeah. just so surprising to me, given that, like, like, as you said, Blaine, like, this is predominantly a kids game. It's designed for kids, mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean, like, only exclusively kids can play it. But given that, you would figure that the fan base wouldn't be so fucking toxic. It's like every time a new game comes out, like, it happened especially with um, with Sword and Shield. Um, every, everyone's just so fucking toxic. Don't it's don't know like, what they want. They don't know what they want. They don't. They don't because, like, literally, it's it, it. The problem is that, and they'll never admit this. The problem is, is this new game is not giving me nostalgic feels. I hate it. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 just the stupidest crap. And I, I just enjoy your enjoy games. Just enjoy games, mm-hmm. guys. Just play games and build a bridge oh, and get lost over Dominic. it. <laughs> oh no he has digivolved oh, no. to a new form oh no we just lost camera okay good i was afraid that like your computer soft <laughs> shut off or something for a second oh, it's not yeah. very not very soft oh no it's um, all good it, it did say, it really, did say really? internal heat too high let it yeah just, that let scared me for, but i guess it meant the camera <laughs> yeah um, really 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 quick on the whole pokemon thing and people being like pissed People have been asking to go back to Diamond and Pearl slash the Sinnoh region forever. And when the Pokemon company goes, look, guys, we're giving you two goddamn games in the Sinnoh region. Aren't you happy? And the Internet looks at the camera and collectively goes, no. What the fuck were you asking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) What the shit were you asking for that? It was literally... And not, I mean, you're right about what you're saying, but even to like simplify it, like when Sword and Shield came out, one of the biggest complaints was one of the biggest complaints, partially based on a hacked preview build made to look shittier than it was, was I just love bringing that up every single time this conversation comes up because it's so fucking stupid. Don't forget the tree, Blaine. Don't forget the tree. I, I, I don't forget about the tree. Like, when Sword and Shield came out, other than that, one of the biggest complaints was like, oh, why can't it, like, you know, why can't it go back? Why can't it be more like how I remember it and stuff like that? I don't like these changes or the, and the changes that are good or like not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Now they're like, okay, here's a game that is like an open world Pokemon game that people have been asking for literally, I think, since we were all like teenagers. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and they're also making a straight remake of like a Diamond one for Pearl. one remake which the is Dino not even Pearl like remakes are one for one remakes like they went yeah. on saying that <laughs> like, which which like people some people are asking for but also like let's keep in mind too like diamond and pearl are not exactly the most popular fucking pokemon thing like which is but, a depressing thing but this, well, this is probably going to be a non-issue with the remake but i remember my biggest issue with the original diamond and pearl and maybe platinum fixed it but even if you increase the text size in um in the options the game just ran so freaking slow like battles took 10 times as long as, the, as the, than they needed to so that's probably why i have not pent up like aggression towards that generation but i have a bit of a sour taste in my mouth but that's it's i, I would assume that's going to be fixed it's a rough generation i mean i never played black and white one and two but i've heard those games are just kind of they're okay diamond and pearl have i mean every pokemon has its diehard fans and every pokemon is literally made for like to be someone's first pokemon so you know i get it but like i i've, I've always heard eh, things like you know but and another thing i want to bring up though while we're talking about this as far as remakes is do people my boyfriend actually brought this up recently again do people realize how many fucking remakes we've gotten in this franchise compared to other franchises how many franchises have given you like because what we've gotten at least two remakes of the original games maybe three i just don't know off the top of my head i think we've it's gotten the, two because we've got let's go which is a remake of the original games but we also have fire red and leaf green yeah you i was have, just about to say you have, um, you know, the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes. Now we have the Diamond and Pearl remakes. You had the Hoenn remakes. Best like, Gen. You literally have all of these different remakes, and like, you have all these different remakes. And I mean, like, we're still complaining. Like, can we get a remake of something? Like, because what? Final, let's go. Let's talk about Final Fantasy. Like that series. You want to talk about crying over not having remakes. We have been begging for a remake of like five, more so six for fucking decade, for a decade. John is starving. He needs it. 
We need Please Final Fantasy VI <laughs> in the Octopath <laughs> engine, but I digress. Fucking, we like, I mean, we just got like what, are, what is essentially a pseudo sequel to Octopath and Final Fantasy Tactics at the same time, so that's good. But like, we. I we, still have yet to try that demo. I need to download me it. Me neither. If, if, if you like an isometric tactics game, you'll most likely enjoy it. Okay. I did enjoy Octopath Traveler through and through. I, I loved that game. Do so, you like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics? I've Over? never played Final Fantasy Tactics. Then I don't know if you're going to like this. It's a okay. different kind of okay. It's a different kind of feel. I was a little on the fence about it when I saw the video, so we'll see. Yeah. To, um, yeah. to shift the conversation a little bit, what's everyone thinking about Legends Arceus? Um, cool. the, people, the people who just keep talking about how rough it looks, this is a year out. Someone pointed out in the SGC, I think it was beta. Beta pointed out we never see a Pokemon game a year out. They're always a couple months. And the fact that they showed this when it's a year out, and also please remember, people, we're in fucking COVID. Like shit's not gonna like there's a big chance this might not come out at this the beginning of 2022. Because if they're I, still I mean, working on it. You go on, Corey, then I got something to add. Oh, sure. I just wanted to say I just want to add what something to Sarah said. And it, the fact that we are in COVID is like I feel like people's entitlement has been amplified so much mm -hmm. oh to the point God, where really like has. I'm bored. I have nothing to do every day because we're stuck in the house all the time. Give me more video games now, 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 now. And if it's not what I like, then fuck you. It's like wow is dealing with that because you know they're pissed that blizzard's not delivering on small things that they said that they were going to do and it's like we're in covid they had to switch to work from home they're working on nine on 9.1 to get that out anyway sorry go but that's been annoying me too go go blank <laughs> yeah, um i mean something i feel like I, I i've seen again like i've seen a joke that's like oh um Funko Pops versus Nendroids, and it's the trailer clip from Diamond and Pearl remake, and it's the clip from uh, Link's Awakening. And I'm just, I laugh every time I see someone retweet that in earnest because if you look really close, there's a little message that says, not representative of final product. And I'm convinced that adult Pokemon fans can't fucking read. Even like, though it's required to play uh, the entire game. Yes. For Pokemon. <laughs> like, like I get bringing, I, and I get like how, cause like there's a, there's two sides to that. There's when you use that as like a little hidden away fine print so that you can have something that's not actually really what your game is. But this isn't that, this is literally like, Hey, this is some rough early stuff. And it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's that rough. I think it looks fine. But as far as if it's not what people like is up to people's par of quality, that text is there for a reason. This is not the final product. This game is like is still being worked on. Yeah, because I saw I, is your problem. I saw people like trying to make the argument of like, oh, and like it's missing some lighting and shaders and stuff that Link's yeah, Awakening has. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. It's not a finished product. Like you, mm -hmm. these people should know better. If I you're sharing like this... that post in earnest, you should know better. Just plain and simple. I feel like this conversation is even cap the one that says the text on it. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like this conversation is just like even completely reversed from what it used to be where um, developers would put their games and it look too good. Then you get the, then you yeah. actually get the game and it doesn't look like what the fuck, what's up with his downgrade. And yeah. now they're trying to, I'm going to give them the, the ben extreme benefit of the doubt. Now they're trying to be more uh, honest about it. And now just like, Oh, this game just looks like shit. Just like, well, fuck it. What, what do you want them to do? I mean, it's yeah. development. It shit changes either yeah. way. Um, people what, wanna, one like, small thing I I'm sorry go ahead Blaine well, I was just going to say people want to bring up like too like oh well Nintendo has basically infinite money so they have no excuse and it's like do you understand that Nintendo is not the only company involved in this that Game Freak makes the game I, I know they're not making the Diamond and Pearl remake but just oh, no, no. They're, they're not making Legends I believe no no, no Game, Freak, Game Freak's doing Legends Game Freak's not doing the Diamond and Pearl remake yeah. There is but, there's another team doing the Diamond and Pearl, but Junitsi, I just pushed your name, I'm so sorry. Junitsi Masuda is a director on the Diamond and Pearl remake, but Game Freak's not doing it. Yeah, okay. who is that that guy is one of is I think believe the original. He is of the, the he, yeah, he is he is the director of the originals. Uh I think they yeah. said the Pokemon Cafe team is doing it or something. But but my point here is that like 
you have Nintendo owns is publishing. You have Game Freak making most of the games. You have um, the Pokemon Company, which I believe owns the anime rights as well as I think they just own the general IP and characters. But I just I don't know 100 percent how that works. This is not as simple as one company give money and make thing better. This is three, at least two multi billion dollar companies and one like I don't even know if I because like I like let's can. Would I be wrong to say that Game Freak started as like an indie and stayed an indie, but was basically published solely by Nintendo for the longest time? I think so. Like I as think... far as scope and size, not like to diminish what they do. I just mean as far as like so people get a realistic expectation of like mm-hmm. why they pretty much make one or two games like every so many years. I mean, they they right. make they make games that sell like crazy, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're like this big monolithic company. It's like they're exactly. still relatively on the small side. Like for the majority of their like there's other Pokemon games on consoles, or whatever that other companies have made. They've been primarily up until the Switch. I mean, you can still consider the Switch handle, but they've made handheld games and swapping over from that. And it's like full 3D yeah. console quality yeah. games. It's, it's a big jump for a company that's been doing that for 20 plus years. Um, right. And we haven't even we haven't even mentioned um, Pokemon Snap. The fact Which that looks we're, fantastic. It looks fantastic. <laughs> and my childhood is screaming because I love that game. <laughs> but Corey, Jesus. that one looks good and the other one looks <laughs> bad. So that makes me right. Corey, if, Even if though ever... Pokemon Snap is an on rails experience specifically constructed around a rail and you right. can't just move everywhere. <laughs> I'm right. Oh, exactly. Rail. If, if you go back to college, um, <laughs> you, use your port for your portfolio for photography. Just use your Pokemon Snap pictures. Yeah. Well, and now you'll be able to <laughs> upload those to Twitter. So it's just like, oh my god, I'm going to do that all the well, time. No. I'm going to do that all the time. You guys are just going to see my feed. And it's going to oh, be nothing. There it goes again. No. <laughs> it's going to be nothing but Pokemon Snap pictures on my feed we'll for like this, Dominic, a promise. month. <laughs> one um uh, one wait, comparison wait, I think we, is a little sorry, yeah. before we before we move off from Pokemon really quick I don't know if anybody else watched this but me and my coworker watched it during our shift the post Malone Pokemon concert was an experience I didn't watch it but I <laughs> I didn't I watch it either it yeah. so I like post weird. Malone's music so post Malone's was a pretty chill so dude weird. so it was so so like they did a mixture of like making him Pokemon fied. So he kind of looks like a cross between like one of those like heavy metal trainers and like a bastard child of Lieutenant Surge. Like it was very weird. He's Professor Post. <laughs> but like they 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 weird enough. I'm ninety nine percent sure they did m- motion capture on him because he had these weird like humanistic movements that Pokemon characters don't normally have. <laughs> so it was. So- <laughs> Weird. And also, he's saying he's saying the song where it's like, uh, like where it's like it's like something s- s- like s- s- sex in it, and in a Pokemon show. And it, oh my god! It oh was, yeah, because it's because it's a cover of a Hootie and the Blowfish song, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but he actually rocked that cover. I ain't gonna lie, that was a really. really I haven't good heard cover. it. I'm not like talking shit on it. But like, it was so weird, and we were watching it. And I'm like, so does this make Post Malone canon in the Pokemon universe now? He's definitely a VTuber <laughs> yes. now. Like, uh, it was, it was, it, it was just an experience. And if you can, if you have 13 minutes, yes, it's 13 fucking minutes. If you have 13 minutes of your time, you can find it on YouTube on the official Pokemon channel. Just sit there and watch it. Maybe pop an edible. I don't know. That Maybe might- pop an edible. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, uh, might- I'm good. I'm so that good. That might make it a crazier experience. But yeah, I just um, I just wanted to point that out because people seem to be forgetting that that also happened. I just want to back to um go back to Legends Arceus real quick. One okay. comparison I think is probably a little silly to make is uh everyone calling it like oh it's breath of the wild and like maybe yeah they use like the same camera thing yeah um, just, just like it, camera it, 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 it like, feels it feels like that one meme where the dude's looking up at the butterfly he's like is this a butterfly it's like is this breath of the wild is it it's an open Boy, world is this me. breath Shut of the up. wild <laughs> i saw i literally have that I in my notes <laughs> wow, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, Dom, you want to go ahead and give your thoughts overall on uh, either announcement? I sure. I, Dom's thoughts. My oh fudge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, you got this. so with Pokemon, I grew up with it, but there was a point where I kind of gave up on Pokemon, and that was like right before Diamond and Pearl came out. So I definitely missed all of that, and then I came back when they remastered um, 
Ruby and Sapphire, but I messaged my friends last night, um, like their experience with Diamond and Pearl and what they think about the whole remastering. And they've been excited for that. They've been looking forward to it. And like, they're not part of that, like that toxic, like fan base that like happens with almost every fan base really. But when I asked mm-hmm. them like, what makes it like kind of special to you guys and like look at my notes it, to them, it's like the music, um, the Pokemon themselves, um, the lore is pretty cool and deep. Uh, quoting my friend, Cynthia is an iconic champion. And, <laughs> and, and, and I quote. <laughs> Damn it, Jose, I just saw. <laughs> I was like looking over at the screen too. And I was like, why is Corey on the house on there? And then I just fucking realized. <laughs> This whole time, <laughs> not the whole time. I've been, I've been like, I've, I've been periodically putting it in and off, like little glitch effects. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, what? I um, hate for, you. For I hate audio you listeners, so for audio listeners, I've been intermittently replacing Corey's uh, camera feed with the uh, image of Corey in the house. <laughs> uh, Corey in the house is best anime. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dominic. <laughs> but um. Basically, um, for my friends, it was one of those things once they kind of saw how the remaster was, it brought those like feelings back of when they first played it, and they're super excited to get those. I mean, there were more fans of the um, Platinum that came out, but um, basically, all I'm saying is like those, like that nostalgia feeling, which Nintendo is really digging at for money, but it's it's there for them. And like, I really appreciate that for at least my friends. And I'm going to get Diamond or Pearl just to get that experience that I've definitely missed out on. Yeah, that's something I'm nice. looking forward to. Is like Same. I was never especially a big fan of Diamond and Pearl, but I am interested to use this with quality of life improvements that I can like actually be like, okay, well, let's see what I missed. Maybe if not ever beating it, because I even bought what it I'm, years later and I still never beat it. What I'm interested in, and you brought it out, Dom, is will they be adding platinum content as DLC? That's something I would I'm imagine it being there by so. default because like the. Um, the Ruby and Sapphire remakes, they had basically all the content plus some more from Emerald. So I would imagine that. Like, I case. feel like they would have also teased. Um, is it, is it, is it Garatina? Was Giratina, it Garatina? Yeah. Uh, I feel like they would have teased that, but they, but there was like nothing relating to platinum in the whole thing. I was so, curious if Booker was going to be in it. Cause I remember him only being in platinum. Yeah, so that's my thing. You made me think of Bioshock, and I'm disappointed. (laughs) Because, like, my thing is... Here's the thing. If they make Platinum content DLC, and they charge, like, $14.99 for it, because Platinum added a lot more than people think it did. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would pay that. But at the same time, I'm hoping that it does what all the other remakes have done and just adds Platinum in, and they're not, like, showing it yet to kind of, like, surprise people closer to launch and be like, oh, hey... Both Diamond and Pearl have the platinum content in it. If the game, if the remakes were forty dollars, like I originally thought they would be, I would probably agree with you. No, but considering they're sixty and I, we don't yet know like how much is involved in it, I don't know if I'd be okay with them charging extra for the platinum stuff. No, yeah, yeah, and I totally get why that's sketchy for some for some people. I'm just curious if they would do that because if they're saying that these are like one to one remakes, they're they're just saying they're wondering when we make some diamond and pearl. That makes me wonder if they're not touching platinum content. When like yeah. platinum adds one of the coolest areas in Pokemon ever, which was the like weird in between universes thing, to where you're like crawl, where, where, where you're like walking on the walls and like doing all that crazy stuff, which was so cool. And I'm just like, so are they only doing diamond and pearl, or they're not saying that they're adding platinum in it yet? Mm-hmm. Unless they're saving that for like maybe like one of the last trailers or like gameplay f- footage or like a next Pokemon Direct or something. Oh, when does the game uh, officially come out? I- uh, Later this of- year. Yeah, late 2021. Okay, so there could be a chance for Platinum like to be snuck in there some way. I mean, even if they didn't necessarily show it in the trailers, like I, I, my assumption is that it's going to be in there just based off the precedent from the uh, Omega Ruby Al- Alpha Sapphire. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and move on. Unless I, does anyone else have any closing thoughts on Pokemon? I didn't realize it was sixty dollars. It is. That's $60. my final thought. 
Happy birthday, Pokemon. <laughs> My final thought Happy is birthday. if you're if you're one of these adult fans and you're getting to like I don't know, in the the thread below whenever Jose posts this on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever, if you're already typing away like, well, here's why you're wrong and the Pokemon company is really gonna but I don't fucking care. I don't care. Shut the fuck up. You're an adult acting like a five year old. Not even a ten year old like the games are aimed at a five year old. You need to just stop and examine your life because you are ge- you are getting so riled up over a game that was never made for you once you pass the age of ten, and it's right. fucking like it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Yeah. I was well, that's the word I was looking for. People really just need to we we. I, I don't know who to blame for this. Maybe our generation. I don't even know. But people need to just like stop and okay, think right. for a moment. Yeah, like I'm now. I'm now. I'm stepping into the my old person shoes. I'm like back in these, back in. these fucking hey, zoomers don't these, know, understand what it was like <laughs> to fight a Pokemon for twenty minutes and then lose. <laughs> right. Everything's instant gratification. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm but I'm just like literally on everything that because because. Let, let's look at it this way. It could be about Pokemon. It could be about Zelda. It could be about Resident Evil. Whatever the fuck you want to be, it's about. It could be about not even game issues. Just like for a moment, think before you post. Just like don't don't post stupid shit because you could be trapped in your emotions, whatever stupid emotions that you're feeling in that moment, and then you're on Twitter or whatever, and you post it, it's out there. It's it's on the ethosphere. You know, it's not going to come back, it, or it is going to come back to bite you. But it's you can't take it back, is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Just I would even just go. It, I would even just go as far as say just to, to wrap it. Just like just don't be a toxic asshole. It's just yeah, exactly. And it's like, it, for instance, it's like me being on me being a public figure on the internet. I have a responsibility to think before I post every single time. If it's not adding something positive to my everyday life or to other people's everyday life. If it's just negative rantings, that's meant to build clout and to piss people off. That doesn't make any sense to me that literally it you're, you're spending so much energy pushing negativity into the world when you could be doing so much more and productive things with your life. Bless you. It's just, ah. like, if, like <laughs> I, I can't agree more because like one of the, one of the things I started doing was instead of just vomiting th- stream of consciousness onto Twitter whenever I was mad about something, if you do genuinely feel strongly and it's and it's not coming from a place of bad faith, but it actually is something you really feel like strongly about as far as what, a quality of a piece of media or something like that, write up a critical essay, a critical analysis essay. You don't even have to make it like a video necessarily. Just write something up, put that somewhere and put it somewhere so you can have it in context. You can look it over and you can really process those emotions while you're getting it out. And if you still feel that way after you write it, then post it. If not, then you got the emotions out. Like Alternative... Those- no one's saying you can't criticize Nintendo or the Pokemon company or Game Freak. It's just actually know what you're talking about and stop with this stupid rhetoric bullshit of, oh, well, I heard from this guy on the internet that, like, uh, oh, Ruby and Sapphire ran at 60 frames a second, so that's why. Like, it's stupid shit. I'm making shit up at this point, but that's what it's gotten to. Also, don't don't ruin other people's fun. Just because yeah. you just because you, you have like a... something doesn't yeah. mean someone else isn't like freaking the fuck out about it yeah. and are super excited you are entitled to your opinion but just because you have an opinion doesn't instantly make you right yep i think i think as the yeah. great nick nick fury said i see that 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 the council has made a decision but seen as the stupidest decision i've chosen to ignore it I thought anyway. you were gonna pull out like an actual philosopher or <laughs> no. author. All right, <laughs> no, all right. we gotta get moving. Sam Jackson, man, he's got some nuggets of wisdom. And that is a nugget wisdom. of wisdom. Seen as it's a Jose, stupid save me from ourselves. Right. Yes, yes, we, we got it. We got to move on. Uh, as a part of Sony's State of Play digital presentation, Square Enix unveiled Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, an upgraded PlayStation Five version of last year's title. Uh, Intergrade is set to improve. Is set to imp- provide improved textures, lighting, atmospheric fog, no, resolution, <laughs> frame rates, as well as a brand new photo mode and dual sense functionality. Uh, Square Enix has stated that PS4 oh. owners of the original will be able to upgrade to the PS5 version for free. Apparently, there's a bit of a confusion where if you have the PlayStation Plus version that's available, I believe it's, it's next month. 
which is basically tomorrow. Um, if you want to get the DLC, you still have to you have to pay for like the full package. It's it's a, it's a weird deal. That's that's not all ironed out. Uh, but uh, the most alluring part of the revamp package is the addition of a new episode that takes place during the events of the remake, starring Yuffie Kisaragi. A uh, in the context of the, the trailer, a Materia Hunter and Wu Tai Government Elite Special Forces operative. Uh, this is a big change from her appearance within the original game because she was a completely optional party member that you could completely avoid, never even know that she existed. Uh, and she didn't even appear until after the party left Midgar. So the fact that she's already in this portion of the game is already pretty big divergence. Um, let alone that her background in the original game is that she was a Wu Tai princess kind of turned rogue materia thief who just kind of goes around stealing your shit. It's a big nuisance. Um, but some of the juicier details, I know particularly, at least for me and Sarah. Okay, is, but can um, I just say really quick, uh, no, no, Dirge of Serpent's no, game no, fucking no, rise no, up. No, we'll get there. No, we'll, we, get there we'll, we'll get there, Sarah. We'll get I, there. Promise. I promise. I'll get there. I will not you gotta wait. end this podcast without covering yep. it. I promise. Yep. yep. <laughs> you gotta wait. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, <laughs> the juiciest detail is, um, from the last wave of enemies that you and your companions come across, it's the uh, a top secret Shinra army called Deep Ground that wasn't introduced until the series until 2006's Dirge of Cerberus, which currently still remains at the absolute tail end of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII timeline. Um, the trailer also ends by showing the army's leader, uh, Weiss, who was, um, who was alive and well at the very end of Dirge of Cerberus. So... I. I know we're going to get into this particular part right now. This but means it, it is, my is going to be in Final Fantasy yes. VII Remake yes. at some point. Gax character Gax. justice not, is going to be. Let's be clear. Not like a character that you know, looks like Gax or Gax. No, no, no. no literally, literally Gax is going to be in the game. Because that was oh, the I'm end so of Dirge excited. of Cerberus. I'm I've watched, so, um, I'm so I watched Mr. Clemson's like, video on it and I couldn't oh my handle God. it when I finished People it. don't understand. So we get it. Dirge of Cerberus wait, wait, wait. wasn't great. Let, let me elaborate on this part real quick. So at the end of Dirge of Cerberus, uh, Weiss is still alive. Genesis is still alive, who didn't previously show up in Dirge of Cerberus. He was in um, Crisis, Crisis Core. Core. So they're still alive and well up to go do some evil shit. So along with all the other stuff that's already happening in Final Fantasy VII Remake with Sephiroth changing the timeline, it seems pretty damn obvious to me that the fact that Weiss and Genesis are still alive at the end of Dirge of Cerberus is just like... They're probably very intrinsically tied into all this fucking nonsense. The, the, I say nonsense in the most loving way possible. They're <laughs> intrinsically tied up in all the fucking nonsense in the in the entire remake. Just can we? Can I please? Can I please finally speak? Let's Sarah go first. Please? George Sabrus was. Up. A, I'm gonna bring us back down. <laughs> George Sabrus was a very bad game that I loved <laughs> growing game. up. Yeah, but we all, but, but like him and I love it. We adore it. I am just like I literally. You can you can talk to my significant other. I was on the phone with him when this when this happened, and I literally screamed, "That's the fucker from Dirge of Cerberus!" Because I'd forgotten his name. And he went, "Really?" I was like, "Yes!" Like Nomura is doing it, and you, yes, Nomura is not directing this DLC. He has gone on record saying he has too many projects he has to do. Yeah, so he's not doing part two either, if I recall. So he's like, so he's. A, so he's like, back it up. But the fact that Nomura did not forget about Dirge of Cerberus, and he is, like, bringing back, like, Deep deep Ground, which I guess was... I, so, I actually Googled it, because a friend had said that Deep Ground was already in the Final Fantasy VII remake. It was. And, it, and, it, and like, yeah, like, basically, there's an NPC that you can talk to who, like, mentions this, like, un, this, like, rumor of this underground lab and then you actually go to that lab and supposedly that's a deep ground lab even though i don't remember the it game is, ever it that. is very heavily hinted to be that yeah so I like can't think of already, anything else that it could be otherwise it yeah be and like me too after reading that i'm like oh okay that makes sense that that was deep deep like deep deep ground but like at the same time the fact that namora is just like don't worry guys we're bringing in everything and just push it dirt to surface which was such a weird fucking game to be Begin with and had like weird like kingdom hearts enemies that weren't kingdom hearts enemies at the time well like, it had been you know, ignored like, by by square Enix for like basically ever since it came out like it was never mentioned whatsoever it was, like, granted, weird. Like, it was a third person shooter <laughs> but, I, mean, I mean like granted like yes it was at the end of the timeline so it's kind of hard to bring it up in earlier instances but yeah like well, basically right, everyone had children, like had like right? chalked it off that yeah, haven't so was before. Was that was before. The one thing, the one thing I will say, really, really quick, Blaine, is that I hope that this means we're getting Vincent at the end of Yuffie's can't like story, 
because yeah, be cool. Vincent Vincent was also a, an optional party member. You didn't have to get him. But the fact that like they're making Yuffie such an important character and they're bringing it in back at Dirge's Cerberus stuff when she was in Dirge of Cerberus and that cute like um and oh, that no. cute uh uh poncho was her poncho from Dirge of Cerberus, like the exact same the one. Google poncho. Yeah. And it's like the fact that they're bringing so much Dirge of Cerberus back and she was in Dirge of Cerberus and she played a big part in it. Vincent, they have to bring Vincent in by the end of the day. Tease the I'd fact be surprised that he's going if to be they in. didn't I either bring him in to tease or like I don't know, just something. Or, I, or, or I, don't, just I don't him. think Especially he's going White to is there. I don't think, Why don't you think uh, they're going to. Because he's still being a little freaking uh, emo boy over in Nibelheim. It wouldn't make sense for him to be there. Like, okay, you, like she, no she was traveling the world. Being in mid, mid but she, she, she no was already traveling. The, she was already traveling the world. I'd say that's a much easier bridge to gap in terms okay, of. Okay, but why would you also put a bunch of Dirge of Cerberus like instrumental plot elements, including Weiss, and not put Vincent? Because they it? were technically already there in the first place. Still, okay, like when we're just teasing so much but, Dirge of Cerberus stuff, it would be absolutely stupid for them not to tease Vincent somehow. At, at, at I will, I will make, I will make this bet. I don't think or, Vincent's going to be there, or, or, or show that giant. Like, wasn't he also trapped in Crystal? When his girlfriend wasn't trapped in Crystal? Like, no, I don't know. No. It's, no. I, Dirt, 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 Dirt Cerberus is a fucking blur to me. But all that I ask is that Vincent comes back and and Steve and Steve Bloom voices him again because I will be very Steve disappointed if they don't do that. I know, which makes me if, sad. If if I'm wrong, I will not make a pun on the podcast for a month. Yeah, you're you're. That's a lie, but sure, okay. Scale, if, but if I if, but if I'm right, you have to dab. Ooh. I'll just do it now to make you feel better. I'll I'll, I'll need an entire month's worth. No, just it's just it's. Honestly, to me, it's the whole fact that that Nomura or that whoever's working on the game is like, don't worry, guys, we didn't forget. they just. Cerberus when it's been like 10 plus years and we're like yeah that's cool like good to know that you guys didn't forget about this weird as fuck Final Fantasy game and Gax was there too <laughs> but um g going back to the actual DLC just like as a piece of like added content like I I've already platinumed Final Fantasy 7 remake and I it, like the hard mode is such a freaking pain in the ass especially those challenges getting the platinum and whatnot but I will more than I'm more than happy to jump into the PS5 version just because it's going to oh, look I'm, better it's going to oh, play so better play um, but like absolutely the most appealing part of this package isn't necessarily even just that additional episode it's the fact that they're going full ham into the fucking crazy bullshit with a remake like em like mm -hmm. embrace like the original game already exists go fucking weird with it like, mm -hmm. I loved all the divergence they made with remake so just keep doing that i'm i'm happy and middle school me's like fuck yeah oh yeah oh yeah middle like middle school me lost her shit like as soon as i saw weiss i was like no fucking way can i bounce something critical off of what jose just said yes so uh, number one i yeah i agree with sarah that just because i remember when that when he showed up in the trailer i remember tweeting and i'm pretty sure i'm quoting myself did anyone else see that white-haired asshole? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's like, oh no, he's back. I, I, was just, I, I didn't. Know I think you need some commas in that sentence. Man. Who's it's the one that bad. stood in front of the mirror and said Weiss's name three times, and he appeared? Oh my god! Um, oh, I, I was listening to a podcast. I was actually talking about this earlier. Uh, much love to uh, Ben Hansen from MinMax, but like when I'm listening to a podcast, is someone like mispronouncing a name repeatedly, and I, I just cringe, I'm just like. Eh. Uh, they were saying Weiss for the record. Oh, oh I hate it. Uh, Love you, Ben. People say Jotaro so many times. Okay, but my critical thing. Um, I was. I mean, I was happy to get more news on the Final Fantasy VII remake, but the night was actually more so bittersweet for me than anything because the fact that they have this new version coming out that is either that is going to include the DLC if you buy it new, or if you free upgrade, you can buy it separately. But so far, as far as we know, you cannot buy it on PS4. Um, the, re the release of um, the Battle Royale First Soldier and the release of Ever Crisis, which I think is, is a neat idea, but all these things combined just made me come to the realization that any doubts I had that this was this was not going to be Square Enix just trying to milk every single fucking dollar they can out of the Final Fantasy VII remake 
that this is more or less them going Kingdom Hearts with it. How many different platforms can we put it on? How many different things can we make? How many like different ways can we get money out of people? And I'm not going to say it's depressing me. I'm just kind of, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't even get to get to get to see part two come out and see what they were going to do with the story before I got that confirmation of, yeah, no, this is really, uh, it's, it's like how, I'm sorry. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but like, it's, it's like how, um, you had people saying when the part, when it got broken up as Midgar was just the the first game and they were breaking up into multiple pieces. A lot of people were like, well, so they're just doing this so they can charge you 60 bucks instead of like 20 bucks or whatever. And I was like, well, no, let's see the way this goes. I beat it. I was like, no, I still think it was worth 60. Let's see where this goes. I don't know anymore. I, I, I am very, very, very wary of what I'm going to see with part two, that it's not just going to be okay, gang. So we're showing up at Junon and then we're going to go to, uh, uh, fucking Cosmo Canyon, but then if they end the Cosmo Canyon, maybe Naki's dad is alive, and like that's the big twist. And so it's like you, you get what I'm saying. I'm worried that it's not really going to be different. Uh, 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 let just me put it this that way: as a carrot on a stick. Let me put it this way: Does it feel weird to you that this game that was already slated to be like an episodic kind of like series of games? Does it feel weird that these episodic games are breaking into further mini episodes? Yeah, that's also maybe. Like, like if you're gonna charge for multiple chapters as they come out for, a, for at least two games that like, I mean literally you could buy Final Fantasy VII on the original, on like multiple platforms. Um, oh, that was the other bittersweet thing. This confirmed that we're probably we're never getting a fucking Crisis Core remake. This is the yeah. Crisis Core remake. We're never getting it. I will it's say actually- one. Se- I will say say one piece of heresy before I toss it to Corey and Dom. Uh, I like the Crisis Core story. I don't. I'm not sure if I'd ever want to play the game again, though. But if uh, they Corey, gave it the gameplay from remake, it would have been fantastic. Yeah. Yes. But it's like obviously with stuff that's happened in remake. Will we ever get that crazy? Like I'm, I, I, I know it's We're like not. a year, a, a year old. But We're the not. ending of remake does some shit, so I'm not going to say anything because I feel like you need to go into it as blind as you possibly can. But it's like, I feel like it's we need that Crisis Core remake, or at We're least not get it, no. or at Train least has left the station, or yeah. or at least they do what they did with the Kingdom Hearts, some of the Kingdom Hearts games, where they just did cutscenes only. They're not going to. I yeah, I mean, but you, YouTube to. exists. It's it's a good enough substitute. Uh, Corey, what do you what are your thoughts? Are you a big Final Fantasy guy? All, all uh, I got to tell you, most of this stuff is going way over my head because I I was never <laughs> super into Final Fantasy. I honestly like my sister in law is super into Final Fantasy, and I get all of the all of the stuff like about Final Fantasy from her. Um, I like Final Fantasy, but my first introduction to anything square enix was honestly kingdom hearts when i was 12 years old so yeah <laughs> Corey, just look up gax gax the fuck do you pronounce just, the guy's name? Google, just google search gacked yeah just Don't google search gacked which while wow, very quick looking for the dirty cerberus song gacked is 45 jesus christ okay. i thought he was older what about um what about no, you Dom? He's 45 years old you're not much of a final fantasy guy either so yeah, does, does no, any of this mean uh, anything to you, Dom? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> everything's kind of going in my head. The names sound cool. The places <laughs> sound cool. Uh, episodic games sounds like a money grab. Uh, let's see, what else is in your notes? Dom's uh, on my side. Y'all heard it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. I mean, if you're confused, just you should play Kingdom Hearts. I mean, yeah, I haven't even touched that either. So, I mean, hate, how don't could hate you? Me. Don't hate me. <laughs> Fantasy Seven is the new Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom I'm Hearts has. King, <laughs> let me just say this one thing: Kingdom Hearts has never been more accessible today than it that yes. like in all of history. Like it's so accessible now. Things, you can access it on your it. favorite <laughs> PC platform, the Epic Game Store. <laughs> so I'm just going to say this now mainly besides Pokemon I just play sports games and party games so I don't know how much help I'm going to be but I mean you can still ask for my opinion and I'll give you whatever answer I can come up with off the top of my head yes okay <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> 
but I think okay. What if what if what if we told you Final Fantasy, but you but you had a gun and you were a vampire? How do we, how would that feel to you? He doesn't know what Final Fantasy is. But so out of context, out of context, out of context I, I, I'm a vampire Final with Fantasy a gun, with a gun and a vampire. So do I get to play as the this uh, yes. vampire wielding? Yes, hmm. and there's also a talking cat that pilots a man suit. <laughs> Interesting. Technically, te- cat. <laughs> te- technically, uh, Final Fantasy X is a sports game because you play water soccer. Right? Oh, not Blitzball! <laughs> One of your teammates' weapon Don't of choice. I am intrigued a- now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Don't underestimate a Blitzball. That's that's Waka's main method of attack, and it's oh, it's God. fucking deadly. But uh, to uh, ask, uh, answer your question, Sarah, I am intrigued by like the premise of just a vampire with a gun. I don't know what I would be doing, but I am intrigued. <laughs> there you go. That's all you need to know in your film. The sad You're part, done. though, is that like you think it's going to be like, oh, is that like Helsing? And it's like, I mean, kind of, but it takes itself too seriously. Wait, which game? Like, under Dirty the game, Cerberus. the an- Dirge of Cerberus, the game, and I'm talking about the anime Helsing because that's also. About oh, the- oh, I didn't even. Know. But isn't there? But isn't there a game? Isn't there a game coming out where you literally like it's like the old west and you're fighting like. Creatures of the Night or something like that. Isn't it oh, called yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the Weird West or something? The Weird yeah. Weird game that I thought was like a, uh, I thought it was a reboot of Dark Watch, and I was. That's oh my god! <laughs> yes, you know what Dark Watch is, Blaine. I love I you. Do. Oh my god! I wish yes, I Dark that. Watch. Right. Oh, I have no weapon. Right. I think we Dark Watch fan cast now. Yes, I think we're all done with Final Fantasy. Wait, I have um, one more thing to say about Final Fantasy. Please, yes. Shoot. How, how many total games are there? Oh, oh no! Uh, oh no! Just, just, oh, no. just quick! Just give me a number. That's no. it. That's all I ask. You know, I'll put my there's like more than twenty. One. Four movies. Like more than more four. Than, possibly more than thirty. There's so okay, many. I never touch a Final Fantasy ever again after hey, today. Uh, there's spin-offs. so many spinoffs that, too. Uh, <laughs> like Final Fantasy Crystals, that that series is a whole spinoff series, and like. All right, we, we gotta move. Did, you asked the worst possible question. Did I make question. a mistake by asking that? <laughs> you made a grave mistake. You'd be better. You'd be better off asking how many Kingdom Hearts games there are. Yeah, what yeah, that, that'd be an easier question. Um, oh, there's more. Than anyway, oh, there's so Wait, much more. Wait, time out. What? <laughs> oh no. So, so Kingdom Hearts came out. And you sad no, fool. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 we gotta move yeah. on. And then. Dragon nope. Hearts 2 came out. And then, oh, and then there's also Birth, birth, birth by <laughs> next, Sleep. Don't forget next that. New Very story. <laughs> oh, and then there's, next, then there's, and, then there's 2.8. Then there's 2.8. Uh, and then there's also 2. <laughs> I hate you guys 9. so much. I'm sorry, I remember, Jose. I remember when 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue got revealed. No. First I'm sorry, was Final <laughs> Chapter <laughs> Prologue? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you know what, Dom? This this, this happens every single time Kingdom no, Hearts comes up. Jose, you're gonna love this. Just let me finish this thought. <laughs> I remember when Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue got revealed, and the entire day I was convinced that someone photoshopped a fake Kingdom Hearts like promo image, and that everyone was just retweeting a goof. And then the next day, I I go, wait, it's real. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I am not making this up. That is 100% what happened. Don't forget zero is 0. 0.2. There was also. Awesome oh, yeah. 0. <laughs> 0. 0.2, a fragmentary <laughs> passage, birth oh, by God. sleep. Okay. Now, now we definitely <laughs> got to move about on. What about Xcode? Come up with more no, Xcode no, no, on no, Japanese no, mobile no, no, no. In Dark Road. It's very important. All right. All right. We got to move on, guys. Anyways. Come on. Right. Right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Henry Cavill, well known for his depictions of Geralt and Super. Superman in Netflix's The Witcher and Snyder's DC movies uh, took to Instagram to tease what his new project was going to be by showing a blurred script with indecipherable words. Uh, However, the outlet Game Pressure was able to use a program Focus Magic to (laughs) unmuddy the text to reveal words such as Cerberus, Reaper, Geth, and Talizora, which pretty irrevocably point towards Cavill's involvement in a Mass Effect project. Um, Any just kind of general thoughts... Oh, not a big fan of Mass Effect. Eh, I used to be. I'll play the remaster when it comes out eventually. I just I have kind of fallen out of love with it. Eh. I love those first three games. Is he gonna be? And I, is he I gonna like, be Shepard? Is that what we're getting? I think he would no, be. A, I think he'd be, be a good Garrett. Shepard. <laughs> Garrus is a dinosaur. So you can still we can we can throw him in dinosaur <laughs> makeup. It'll be fine. 
Um, if we, if we I, can fuck the dinosaur, Henry Cavill can be the dinosaur. It's fine. He's going to be Joker and they're going to recast Seth Green. <laughs> no! <laughs> Make Seth Green Shepard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I like Henry Cavill. I think he's he's going to nail it, um, like, w- regardless of whatever role he's in. But I think the part that's most disappointing to me about this is um, I've played the first three Mass Effect games. I don't want a retelling of the first three Mass Effect games. If it's not going to be, like, some weird side story involving that same crew. Like, adding to the world. Yeah, because, like, I yeah, like, I the, I, I like the key prom... Uh, not key promise. The key premise behind Andromeda of just, like, let's take this universe and literally fuck off to another galaxy <laughs> to do something interesting. And I think Andromeda failed for a multitude of reasons. But I just don't want the exact same thing, but in a different medium. I, I think that's a very boring boring thing that you can do with what's probably one of the most interesting universes that you've been able to been, that you've been able to play in a game andromeda agree. failed but i want to give it credit for doing something which was just like like you said they fucked off to another galaxy we could have stayed in that galaxy and they could have like retconned the ending of mass effect 3 but they chose not to do that which I mean, I, I would I would give Andromeda a little bit of credit and be like, at least they like again they fucked off to another galaxy. They try to do something completely different with like completely different characters. Well, I think so. they just wrote themselves in a really bad corner with the end of Mass Effect Three. Like like all those endings yeah, are pretty really similar with, with just like some minor, well minor um, changes as to, like how the solution gets gets solved, uh, the problem gets solved. But I feel like they just need to buckle down and say I, I know. Everyone in the in the fan base is going to be pissy because like, oh, what about my authored freaking um, my story? Like every little decision, like I don't think people believe or I know, Corey, weren't you you and me were in a class where we had to make a narrative based little film, right? Yeah. um, And even for like the limited skill that we were doing, mm -hmm. like that entire web of narrative things and physically tying. Oh, yeah. Like choose your choose your pathway or whatever. Yeah. And it was an extremely complicated thing to do, even if you're doing like nine little variables or whatever that they they culminate at the end. Yeah. Uh, Culminating these three things across three games were never going to be like the ultimate fucking payoff that all these freaking angry YouTubers are are pulling off. It's just like it is what it is. It is like a little bar difficult. Yeah, the, the bartender you talked to at the beginning of Mass Effect 1 isn't going to pop up and, like, be a soldier and he's going to, like, catch a grenade. It's like it's not going to be some stupid shit like that. Um, but I think, like, they what, what Bioware needs to do, if they're going to continue, or even or even this, this film, movie, uh, TV show, whatever they're going to do with this, I think the best thing they could do is just fucking buckle down, ignore the pissed off fans, and just pick one ending that's canon. And I think that's basically what they're doing for the new Mass Effect game anyway, where they, they've kind of said that the destroy ending is canon. And I know that's going to piss fans off, but I really don't fucking give a shit. Um, it, it's just going to help the series just kind of streamline itself versus just like, I don't know, there is this vague thing that happened in the past where we, could, we never really have any proper uh, resolution with it. I will right. say as someone with absolutely no stock in Mass Effect discourse whatsoever, um, I, while I agree that, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of foolhardy to assume that every choice you made would actually make such a drastic, unique thing in a game. But at the same time, you can't really say that Bioware and Blizzard Activate or Bioware and uh, what EA were not at least partially responsible for that when so much of the marketing since Mass Effect 1 was like, have your own unique. It was the same thing that happened to the Walking Dead game like originally was that uh, the first season it was like so much of it was marketed it was like every choice you make will change the story and you'll have your own unique story and anyone who played it realized no you all end up in pretty much the exact same place it's just the certain details surrounding it were different and the kind of person maybe that your character was were different which i don't know oh uh, buckets of gravy it's okay i gotta <laughs> i gotta back it seems up to me on I love it that. seems to be just an even kind of responsibility thing i guess is how i feel i i feel like i just generally may, maybe even to like most people whatever i just don't give a shit about marketing like if something if the premise of something already interests me I, I i completely zone out on marketing i don't give a fucking shit about it i realize that's not how most people operate but i, I think people just probably need to like be more you're, pragmatic you're advertising your game to be a certain thing if it's not that thing people are going to get upset i don't think it deserves to be like a worst thing ever but still mm-hmm. the, the I, I just think a level of pragmatism ever. needs to needs to be at play mm. fair enough uh what about you sarah 
I mean, so fair warning, I loved Mass Effect 2. I liked 3. I never really got into 1. That's why this collection really excites me to know that they spent a lot of time getting 1 to be playable again. So I'm actually really excited to finally sit down and play through 1. Um, I was one of the weird people who also liked Andromeda. So, like, hate me now, it's okay. Just, I'm gonna give you all 5 seconds to shoot the shit at me, it's fine. <laughs> like I, I just yeah, just go ahead. You now in five seconds. No, it was okay. No, yeah, I mean, when, okay. So I, I'm actually gonna go on a record and say that I only ever played Mass Effect three, um, and then I, and then I jumped into Andromeda, and I was actually very, very excited for Andromeda. So, and, so, so was I. And, and and like I actually pre like that was one of the first that was like the first Mass Effect game I actually ever pre ordered, and. Then like I was playing it and I was actually having a lot of fun with it. And then I was, I was like reading all the, all of the outrage and stuff on, on line. And I like some of my, I wouldn't call them friends of mine. They were friends of, a, of friends were giving me shit for even buying it. And like, Oh, you yeah. wasted, like, Oh, sorry. Uh, you wasted your money, you know? And like, they literally yeah. were calling me names and like give and like really giving me harsh shit. And I'm just like, and literally, I stopped playing Mass Effect Andromeda because of that. Finish like I li- Andromeda be- it's, because it's I good, it's fun. It I, I, I like favorite Mass Effect characters. Ever. I agree. I was having a blast with it, but I literally, I was so, sh- I I got so much hate for it, and I was shamed out of in, out of into not playing it anymore. It's, and I felt so like I th- crummy. I think it's, that's what it goes back to what you were talking about earlier. It's uh, if people are enjoying something, let them enjoy it. And like, yeah, and, like exactly. there, there's always a place for criticism. And, I, and trust me, there, there's a lot of shit you can criticize and drama for. I know I've been on the record for doing it uh, countless times, but it's, it's, it should never come at the cost of fucking shitting on people. Like even, even when we criticize a game or a movie, whatever, it is never to criticize the, the artist It's to criticize the art. You should never criticize a person for either what, what what they enjoy or for for what they create like, like i would I, love like i would love it if they um if, if after they come out with the mass effect 3 or mass effect 1 2 and 3 remaster i would love it if they actually came out with like a next gen upgrade for mass effect andromeda because I, I would play the shit out of out of that I, yeah i think if they're going to do that they might as well because I, I feel like a lot of andromeda's core issues it's basically it just came out of the oven like a year or two too early like, it just needed more time and yeah just, just like give stick it, it back in the oven give it a little bit more cooking it's you know andromeda i think was blame give me one second andromeda i think was one of the main one of the not really one of the first game one of the main games to come out where you saw people shitting on other people who were enjoying it. I had a few friends shitting on me. They're, they're like, why are you still playing Andromeda? And I'm like, I'm sorry. Me and Liam's relationship is fucking great. And you can shut up. Like, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know why like, people. It was like one of those things where it's like, I, and I got very lucky. I had no glitches in my entire playthrough. I mean, I had times where my character looked like <laughs> moon, moonwalk. And I was like, I, okay, that's weird. But I had nothing like game breaking happen to me. I was I, loving the fuck out of Andromeda. And I, I, had a, knew. I had a glitch when it, it was a humorous one where you're only supposed to be able to like romance like one character at a time. Oh God, you're going to romance I, multiple I, people. I, I was accidentally able to romance uh, whatever whatever the regular human female was. And, uh, the um, the and, elusive man's kid. Yes, and and PB, and so when it got to the That's cuts where every where, where everyone's um sitting on the couch like like watching the movie for like they they glitched into one being that are just like crossing over each other. I'm just like, oh <laughs> my god, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, it's like I feel like because again, shit on Andromeda for reasons to be shit on it. One of my favorite parts of Andromeda was it was its writing, and just it was some of my favorite writings of of like party members in. Uh, yeah, fight me on this opinion. It had some of my favorite party mem- members in the entire s- series. And I just wish more people gave that game a chance. And Corey, I'm so sorry it's, that that happened to you. It's like, I'm it's so like sorry three that you bucks nowadays playing. anyway. Yeah. Also, yeah. if you fucking have <laughs> Game Pass, you get EA shit free too. You could just download it on your Series X and play it. I mean, I don't know why everyone's upset about it because it's not even the worst Mass Effect game. Yep. I actually, I still have yeah. it. On, that, that'd be number one. 
I, I technically, yeah. I, I bought it on my PlayStation 4, so technically it's still in my library. So I could just it's download still in it. mine, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, playing um, go. Um, Dom, do you, do you have any thoughts on Mass Effect in, in, uh, whatsoever? Oh, I think, do we Maybe. Dom? Oh, wait, no, no, I'm still here. I'm alive. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking. kind of distracted looking at something else. I won't bring it up for your sake, but uh, <laughs> 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 but, oh, no. uh yeah, no, I again, that that's the end of that. <laughs> um, but as for Mass Effect, I remember how like much people cared about three when it came out. Um, I never played it. I watched some gameplay of it when I was over at a friend's house, but like. I've never touched it. I don't know who this shepherd is, but he sounds okay. Uh, <laughs> but he sounds okay. He sounds like a cool dude or gal. Uh, <laughs> Apple plays shepherd. Great. If he plays that dinosaur, cool. Uh, I mean, <laughs> who knows? I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to watch Dom, the film just because uh, Cavill's I, I, in it. I think you actually have the best perspective out of this yep. having not played Mass Effect. So what it, is it, it, does this adaptation, does it draw you any closer to wanting to play the games or do you feel like it's maybe easing you into the series whatsoever? That would depend on the film itself. Like if you, if it is, like you said, if it basically is like a retelling of the original trilogy, then that's all I need. I don't need to play the games, but if it like is a story within that universe and it gets me invested, then possibly maybe I might get the game and possibly play it. Okay. I would, I would, I still think Mass Effect 2 and 3 are the best, are some of the best games ever made. I probably, <laughs> I probably still prefer 2, even though if it's a little bit rougher around the edges, but um, and you said I, actually, that like might a, even be ironed out with the, with the legendary edition. You said it's like a multiple choice type of game? Just imagine you are essentially space wizards with Ooh. guns. I mean, it's, it's, oh, I'm in. And and it's, you can sleep with aliens. It's yes. Star Trek. You go around <laughs> shooting aliens and sleeping with other aliens, and then you do alien stuff. It, it, mm -hmm. it is very. It's weird. Like the first game is kind of regular Star Trek with with shooting. The second and third one are more like J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Mm -hmm. the there's, there's many lens, that honestly lens flares, the most lens lens to <laughs> it's it's like it's magic but it's magic explained by science wait it's, hold on Corey. it's, it's weird like how they bring magic, palpatine in at the last magic second in the space <laughs> right it's magic in space uh-huh in space but it's not star wars yeah it's nope. not, not, magic, magic. not star wars okay star so wars I'm a doesn't have visible. this much sex in it um <laughs> well i mean anakin had enough but <laughs> <laughs> not to I just want to, I do want to talk about something and not to so much like call you out Jose, because I think you definitely, you meant what I'm about to say, even if what you said was more literal. Um, it's when you're saying, um, criticize the art, not the art. You know what? Yeah. I realized that as I was saying, cause obviously there's going to be some scenarios where if, yeah, if someone, if someone creates something that's problematic, even if they don't intend it, yes, you still have to criticize them. And then, yeah. uh, I, I'm pretty sure you and me are on the same train of thought but just just for i feel like what we were discussing that period of time it kind of aligned but i i, I know exactly no, no, where, no, no, where no. You're I, from. I i i figured that's what you meant and that's why i started the sentence the way it did um i just think there's also a, there's a good thing to bring up with that uh in general is that um and i guess into what core was saying when he felt like shamed for playing the game it's i i feel there's a there's a line between um criticizing the thing jokingly and ribbing and like like my boyfriend busts my chops for being a final fantasy fan all the time and i can't even defend myself um <laughs> but as kingdom kingdom hearts people we are completely he, agreed with he, you well he no he loves kingdom hearts too but he also oh like, no it, it's a whole it's it, we'll get into that another time maybe i don't want to talk for him but but basically what i'm getting at is that like when i approach these situations and i feel like you know if you're actually going to take that step to actually criticize the person for consuming the media or criticize the artist for making the media you have to fit a very specific set of criteria one of those pieces of criteria being you have to really know this person like like jose it's no secret to anyone but like i i've and i don't think you mind me saying this but like i've warned you about people about media about other things like been like hey just so you know I know you're watching this, not giving you shit, but this is something you need to be aware of, or this is a person you follow. And like, when you have these conversations, 
it needs to be from a place of I know you and I can talk to you about this because we know each other well enough. When you're a random motherfucker being like, oh, that shit fucking sucks. Like, I'm not going to give a fuck what you have to say. I'm going to block you or mute you and just not even listen to you. But like, but like um, a, a better example would be, I, I'm not going to name names only because it's not even worth like getting into, but like, and it wasn't, and it actually ended really positively. But someone I was mutuals with I talked to about like a a series and I responded to one thing. Then we DM'd each other and we're talking about it. And like, if you, if you have deep problems with a piece of media, it's okay to voice those things, but just keep in mind that who you're attacking or talking to and what the stakes are. That being Mm -hmm. said, right. um, Attack on Titan is fucking trash and is also sort of pro fascist propaganda. That is a fact. I am. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. No. There's. There's a lot of anime that is pro imperialistic. There is um, propaganda. Was, yeah. Funny enough, I love how I was scared of that when I started watching Golden Kamui, and then it's actually the exact opposite, but it still has some weird stuff with like some characters. Mm-hmm. But nothing like pro imperialist. It's actually all very like the army and military of Japan fucking suck. Right. Well, and anyway, that's yes. and 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 I was just gonna add something to what you just said, Blaine, and just like that was literally the difference when like when getting into civil disputes or arguments online. That is literally the difference between uh, somebody coming at you or adding you mm-hmm. uh, who you don't even know, and versus somebody that you actually know or who you mutuals with, and like that. That's the difference between mending bridges and burning bridges. No, mm-hmm. literally, you know, it's just it, and you. I think you handled you handled both of those situations very maturely so and there's even ways like you know it's there's 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 telling there's ways to even tell people like to be more conscious we we all need to be more conscious of how we consume media that is it's okay Mm -hmm. it's okay to be wrong it's okay to not know everything it's also okay to like i'm not gonna say it's okay to consume problematic media because that's that's gonna be such a long conversation and Mm -hmm. i don't personally believe it's you can be that cut and dry about it that's very reductive um not not, that anyone here is is saying not that anyone here is saying that right but like it's just you have to know when to to, you have number one you have to be able to enjoy media if you enjoy a piece of media you have to be able to bring up the bad things about it and not pretend they don't exist especially Mm -hmm. if like like i'll talk about how much i love near i also won't pretend that that series doesn't have massive problems Automata mm-hmm. has some weird, like almost show to base stuff I, going on. I, was talk- I don't I know was how think- I feel about it, but the story itself is very good. I'm worried that there's going to be something like that in Replicant that I'm not aware of. I was I thinking about Drakengard. Guard. I was thinking about Drakengard earlier. Well, where don't I'm think just like, about oh, no. Hard. no, no, oh, no, 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 let him talk, let him talk, let him talk. I, I don't remember the characters names or whatever. It isn't like one of your companions, like a pedophile, but he's like yeah. fighting the urges <laughs> and then he's like yes. acts out it's, on it once in a if while. If I remember correctly that, yeah, it is. And it's like the way it's framed is not like, oh, and you need to feel sympathy for him. <laughs> yeah, like no, like he is and, and he is a piece person. of shit. Yeah, which is a very seems to be a very Yoko Taro thing, like and his and the people that he works with is very like these are awful people or these this is like an awful person, etc. I don't know, but I, I can also credit. I don't know. It's it, 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 it's complicated. It's it is complicated trying to I don't, I don't navigate know if it's painting, these spheres. I don't know if it's painting with too wide a brush, but my rule of thumb and maybe it's even an oxymoron to say to say that it's to me i always try to take everything by a case by case basis i think it's very hard yeah, to absolutely to, to, to people just, people try to generalize way too often and they try to throw throw things in a box or throw a blanket over it and say this is what this is and you can't you exactly. can't do that you can't do that mm-hmm. to humans you can't do that online you just Think critically. Use your brain. It's a muscle, just like everything else. So you know, I just a thought. <laughs> uh, a turn of phrase that my boyfriend's <laughs> girlfriend had mentioned. Had uh, she at least she was the first person I heard it, and they had both told me this. But you got to look at something and be like, "Am I eating a shit sandwich for the bread?" That's basically how I look at media when I'm like, if you're consuming something that has all these problems, are you eating a shit sandwich for the bread, or are you eating some, or are you actually consuming something that is decent uh, despite flaws? That's like how it's, you have to look at it. It's, it's okay. And that's not that's not like saying that you can't that's not saying that like we can't watch 
something for pure popcorn entertainment. That's different. But if you're watching, if you're watching something that literally has problematic themes and you're not realizing those problematic themes, exactly. and then somebody comes and, and brings those themes to your attention, you have to be at least somewhat receptive to hearing their side of things. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I and, think and, that's just, and, you know, I, I think it's just like the basis of, uh, I mean, uh, f- four of us here are f- film majors and it's just like a, a lot of stuff out, a lot of media out there is incredibly problematic. And like some of the most, I know this is like the go-to example. Me and Blaine are both very avid fans of Gaunts, but that has so much fucking problematic shit in it. Yeah. And I think, I'll, I think you I'll, can I'll, still I'm enjoy. Sorry, I don't mean to, be, I don't mean to promote you. You could just say Gantz. You don't have to say Gantz. You could say Gantz. No. Uh, it's been driving I'm me crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, I wouldn't even bring it up. I wouldn't even bring it up when you brought up before, like it's, hearing someone on a podcast saying, uh, I'm just like, <laughs> I've been trying to talk it, to you about it and it never came up. Wait, is sorry. that not how it's pronounced? Mm-hmm. Uh, Gantz, no is, Gantz is like the Japanese pronunciation. It's the word is Gantz. You can say it like Gantz. It's, it's like how uh, people see that feels Gantz wrong to me. Gansu. Also, I just I just want to uh, say this one thing. Being a decent human being is not being a social social justice warrior. Mm-hmm. Yes. Period. Uh, Period. Fuck, fuck. What was I uh, going to say? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. L- let me search my brain for a second. Um, I-, I lost my train of thought. We need to go to the next oh, news story anyway. I'm so sorry. Can we though? <laughs> yes. Don't worry. I think the next. I think the next train should be arriving in about five minutes. Choo choo. Choo choo. Uh, Bio- <laughs> Bioware executive producer Christian Daly has announced via the Bioware blog that Anthem Next, uh, the title's planned initiative poised to revamp the game with new content, has been canceled. So uh, you're talking com- about a derailed this- trade. This comes upon the heels of Anthem's publisher, EA, uh, spending the last two weeks to reevaluate the status of the title as to whether or not it justified the amount of time and resources required to bring it uh, back into the grace of gamers. Uh, Anthem released to middling review scores and to even worse decline of players due to a lackluster endgame and a malnutrition of continued content. Uh, Daily ends the blog by reaffirming that Anthem's online features will remain in service, but that the team will be moving onwards to strengthen Dragon Age 4 and, f- and a future massive Effect titles as well as apparently Star Wars The Old Republic. I always forget that that is still a thing. It is still a thing. Holy shit. It is. Yeah. As someone who played it, I can confirm it is still a thing. I played um, the demo for like a minute. Has anyone here played Anthem? No. I played the demo. Yeah. I yeah. I was in. No, no. I was in the pre order demo. So Not you had to pre order it to get it. I was in that one. I then canceled my pre-order. <laughs> I was in the open free beta that came out after that one. I think um, it just comes down to, because I feel like, I don't know if we talked about this before, but but, but Destiny was in a really freaking rough place for like the first year it came out. And you can argue even like halfway through Destiny 2's lifespan. But the one thing it yeah. had that constantly got people to come back, even despite the, the lackluster content, the lack of continued content, as well as... um like the overly grindy nature of it, the low freaking drop rates. I never got a fucking Galahorn. Fuck you. Oh, um, don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, but but despite all that, the reason why people kept playing uh, Destiny is because the gameplay was just that freaking good. And it, that was, w- it was satisfying and, as hell. Was like, it? I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny but, um, like, what? Was, 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 was as easy to pick up and play and have fun with in the same way that mm-hmm. like when halo came out and it was like oh shit like this is the this is the new hot first person shooter like that's how destiny one felt despite not picking not having the story to back it up like halo did exactly destiny two improved on both but also because of the this shit with activision that really hit them hard where like all the weird monetization and the, that now that they've made it free to sorry that's a whole other discussion yeah and, um, anyway Jose, but you um with what you were saying but yeah, so like the base gameplay, um, it's just like that bungee magic. It's why Halo is so good. It's why Destiny is so good. It's I, I would say it's alongside Call of Duty and then maybe um, fuck. There's another game I usually go to, probably Titanfall. But it's it's like the best experience you can have playing a first person shooter with a controller. And the mm-hmm. and the PC version plays even better. It's it's freaking amazing how much that transition works between the versions of Destiny Two. But the gameplay is what saved destiny destiny would not be where it is if it if it, if it had shitty gameplay and where that made up for all the other as- aspects in destiny like where there's a story lack of contents the grind whatever um 
Anthem didn't even have the gameplay to support it, and it was even more so worse off and, than Destiny and all those other aforementioned categories. So it 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 had no appeal to me whatsoever. Yeah. Like the only thing it had going for it was you can fly like Iron Man. And if I remember from um, Jason yeah, Schreier's book, were awesome. Like the yeah. shooting was basic as hell. It just felt like nothing. But the flying mechanics themselves were super intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, in Go Jason on, Schreier's okay, book, um, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, he kind of goes over the development cycle of uh, of Anthem, where they originally did have flying in the game, but they did take it out because it kind of ruined <laughs> a lot of the flow of the game as well, like their level design, how systems worked. And so when they... So EA pushed them to have flying at the last second so they could show it for for the um, for his initial trailer. I think it was an E3. Uh, so that kind of locked them in and they only had what well, I think it was like less than a year to push it out. That alone set Anthem back so freaking far. So maybe if they had had a second go around of making an Anthem 2, that would have ironed things out. Let it actually focus on improving the game versus trying to like rush this system that they weren't originally planning to, to have stay in the game. Mm -hmm. But as as is, there is absolutely nothing about Anthem that, that was ever interesting to me. So I'm just, it's, it's nothing lost for me personally. It, it, to me, it lacked what made a Bioware game, a Bioware game. Fucking aliens. Well, I mean, you aren't wrong. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I okay. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. A part of the reason why I canceled my pre-order was because Bioware said they weren't going to have any romance options in it, and I went, "I'm sorry, then I don't want your damn game done." But it's like it does. It honest to God, when I played it, it didn't feel like a Bioware game to me, and that was one of the main reasons why I wasn't a big fan of it. Because like you know, when you go into a Bioware game, you kind of already have this preconceived notion of what you're getting into. And when I played Anthem, it just didn't feel like a Bioware game, which is why I just kind of lost interest in it. But I was totally all here for those that were still playing it. I was like, hey, man, you like the thing? You go enjoy the thing. You go do the thing. You go fly like Iron Iron Man. Good on you. And I actually got excited when they said that they were, like, reworking Anthem, because I remember the, like, Final Fantasy XIV re- re- rework, and, like, how those games became, like, fucking amazing. And I was thinking, it's Bioware. If they're given more time, Anthem's probably going to be something fucking cool. I would say the uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy comparison's um, an interesting one, because I hadn't thought about this originally. Um, despite all the issues it, with um, the original Final Fantasy XIV launch, so pre-Realm um, Reborn, uh, people were still like super crazy actively playing the mm-hmm. game, whereas Anthem just dropped off so freaking early. So it's and like, it's why even bother making there's... content for people that aren't even going to play it? It's crazy because there's still people playing the old the old re- Republic, and I can't remember the last time that game had a content drop. <laughs> and there are it's... people still like actively addicted to that game. And like I said, good for them. I played it for a while. It was just a Bioware RPG that was Star Star Wars. You can like romance people and do all the Bioware R- R- RPG stuff. Like that's awesome. When did that game have a content drop? But it still has like an insanely active fan base I, of people. I feel like we actually have to play off something you said, Sarah. I think we have to ask ourselves: When was the last time like some someone saying, "Well, this is a Bioware title," actually meant something? Yeah. Not since twenty. <laughs> when did Mass Effect Three come out? Twenty twelve. <laughs> I mean, I would even argue, I would even argue, I mean, again, this is just because I'm not as big a fan of the series as y'all are, but, like, I would even maybe argue, like, before Mass Effect 3 or 2, as far Dragon as... Dragon Age. Like, when you, I, yeah, like, maybe Dragon Age Origins, because even though, and that game's imperfect, but that at least still, that felt, like, how you mm-hmm. said that, what it, how it feels like a Bioware game, even if mm-hmm. I still feel it's kind of reductive to say, well, to basically assume a studio's not going to change, at the same time, I know exactly what you mean. Because, like, Mass Effect 1, Dragon Age Origins feel like Bioware games in the same way that, like, Night of the Old Republic 1 did. Um, I, I, they're, they're completely uh, different Baldur's games, Gate, but they right? still feel, yeah, but they still feel like a Bioware game. Like, when I played, so Dragon Age Inquisition is one of my favorite games of all time. It obviously has problems, but that's the only game. I also I've haven't played. played past Dragon Age Origins. Like, that's the thing. So, like, like, there are large Inquisition, swaths of time I have not played Bioware games. Yeah. In- Inquisition is one of my favorite games of of all time. Andromeda plays a lot like Inqu- Inquisition, which is probably why I like Andromeda as much as I do. 
and even though Inquisition is completely different from what Origins and Dragon Age 2 was, it's still a Bioware game. When I play it, I'm getting those Bioware tingles. It's like, I'm like, oh, it's a Bioware game. Yeah. So it's everything I like about a Bioware game. When I played Anthem, I felt like it was nowhere near what I... And of course, everyone's going to think their their definition of a Bioware game is going to be different than to mine. Anthem felt nothing like a Bioware game to me. I feel it like felt a lot like, of that also comes down to... <laughs> Like you could feel the strings of freaking EA saying we need a Destiny game. You yeah. need a game that fits. Yeah, this and, and it's, it's just like, like and it, it's 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 actually kind of sad because you can feel like with like with like Anthem's lore and the way that like the hub area is set up, you can feel that Bioware wanted to put like Bioware things into it, but EA was just so like we need nah. we need a Destiny, we need this fly like iron iron man like it just you know, it's legitimately sad actually, when you think about I'm it i'm actually really interested in uh, dominic did you know about anthem whatsoever i remember seeing a trailer for it and thinking it kind of looked bland like looked like the same as other games mm-hmm. um, like it, it kind of lacked a personality yeah it didn't seem like it didn't have anything to stand out with so i just didn't care for it It was one of those where like i didn't miss it i just avoided it right um I guess one follow-up question that's also interesting and everyone else can chime in for it also. Um, for for the way that c- certain games are going now, like they're trying to be Destiny clones and they're relying on being like as a games as a service. Does it make you hesitant to want to jump into one of these games knowing that the publisher can just basically pull the plug and just be like, we're not going to support this thing that you've spent like countless hours in. Does, does that deter you at all? Hmm. Uh, cause you, you say they could pull it at any moment. Right. And so it's that like kind of, you don't know factor. So if you think it's not going to happen, then yeah, I'm going to go in, I'm going to, it's going to happen. And then once they pull the plug, I'm going to be angry about it and then move on. But if like, I know going in like this probably won't last. Yeah. I'm going to kind of, depending on what type of game it is and like, is it going to be worth it? That's going to be a question to ask myself before I like pay for it and depending on the price and everything. And like, do I have to do in-game purchases? It's so many variables to like knowing ahead of time this isn't going to last, but unknowing, I could see why like people could be angry where you spent countless hours on something and then it's just gone. Right. Hmm. Uh, what about you, Corey? Um, I believe, I don't know. I just, I have this feeling that, um, triple a companies and, and, and game game creating studios are, really going through a sort of shooting themselves in the foot like period right now. And um, with the exception of uh, Capcom doing, I was phenom- just about to say yeah, with the exception do. of Capcom Capcom's doing a fantastic great. work with resident <laughs> evil. Um, however, it wasn't always like that because yeah. we all remember resident evil six. Um, no, I, I just streamed that yesterday. <laughs> I, I, I will defend resident evil six, but I will admit this playthrough is making me go like, There's, this is not good. Anyways. Um, it's it, so we're really seeing kind of like a, a, a um, a renaissance of indie game creators rising up and and really capturing the attention of gamers right now. Um, I think that's because that gamers, as a core, we want something more than just the rag and tag shoot 'em up gamers constant up. third. You know, yeah, <laughs> gamers rise up. So it's like the constant like third person or first person point of view of of shooting enemies and just it's just it, it, like like uh like um dominic said it, it, it's it felt like it felt like the same thing it felt like a clone of something else it's like we see these triple a companies constantly coming out or pumping out similar content than a because they because that's what's popular right now but then you see all of these indie companies that are literally people who just are friends and they are knowledgeable about making a game. And it's like three people and they make this fantastic game that sells so many. It's like, it's like millions of copies. And, and um, 
then the 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 AAA companies are sitting there with their thumbs up their asses like, well, what the hell are we supposed to do? What are we doing wrong? Maybe listen to what people actually want. Maybe maybe inject people who will create art in the gaming community instead of, I don't know, uh, another first person shooter for a, 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 some 12 year old sitting in his mom's basement in Texas. You know, it's like, <laughs> Damn, burn on Texas. <laughs> They need they need the basement. It's warmer down there right now, Corey. That's yeah, true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to rag on Texas after the recent events that happened. Yeah, it's all good. But you get my visual. You get my visual. No, I feel you. And like yeah. when I first saw the trailer for Anthem, I thought it was something for like X. Yeah. Like just that's how it seemed to me. Yeah. Let's see. I didn't, I didn't mean to go on a rant either, but I was like. <laughs> We have about 30 minutes left. Should we go ahead and jump over to what we've been playing, or should we try to squeeze in this Days Gone story? Uh, I don't care about you know what? We I can think pass. Gonna, I think I'm going to save Days Gone because I know Mesa has strong thoughts. I did have one last thing to say about the Bioware conversation. Yeah, good. Um, it almost feels ironic to me because I'm thinking back to considering how Bioware is just basically being strangled by EA and is not even like really the team it used to be. And it, it reminds me of when like back when Bioware was the big hot shit of like, oh, they made Night's Hill to Public and they made all these cool RPGs. They're the RPG fucking Western dev and they're doing all this cool shit before they bought, were brought by EA. And how Obsidian was kind of the redheaded stepchild of like I feel like that's probably a really problematic term um the, the obsidian was just kind of like the 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 black ambitious, sheep yeah the black sheep like ambitious not a lot of people in like as far as people who are playing the games were fo- at least my age were following that like obsidian was being like mis not mismanaged that every time they would be contracted out to work for a company like ea or like another one like uh, whatever companies they're working for they were given like s- ridiculous deadlines unfair shit non-stop and they were doing the best they could and so they were just not releasing bomb after bomb but like you'd have a overly ambitious now like the original release of nice little public 2 that game is great but that version of that game is busted to, de- to today unless you get the restored content mod which is phenomenal um but like and i'm just thinking now obsidian has sh- has not only like shake shaken off that old idea of like oh they're they're the they make these other things that aren't really that good or like the state that fallout new vegas the fact that fallout new vegas was as buggy as it was when it first came out and they made that shit in like less than a year i think it was it was less than a year i'm pretty sure it was like eight months or something even if you're using existing assets that's a that's fucking ridiculous and now and then now that's heralded as one i mean it was always seen as the best the better one but by a lot of people but like that's heralded as one of the best 3d rpgs first person rpgs ever made that people a lot of people myself included will say it's the best fallout game um you have i mean you're not wrong now you have obsidian like has shown what they can do now have people actually giving them money and they've had this deal with microsoft now which is not them being strangled it's them being given the money and basically let do what they're gonna do mm-hmm. like well, I yeah, and i was i was gonna add like it's then, just ironic then, to me to see that change in power i guess that power right shift well i was gonna and i was gonna add uh that because then you're getting into like um the culture and the attitude of the 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 shareholders the you know the 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 people that are giving them the money and it's like okay what are their shareholders like are these shareholders that are strangling them like you said like are they constantly like we want our money what where's our return where's our return release the game release the game release the game mm-hmm. my grandson likes the Fortnite. why make it like the Fortnite? <laughs> right a exactly fifth yacht now yeah so it's like you you either have shareholders that are constantly like that or you have shareholders who are are acting in good faith of they know they will get their return eventually if they are if they are patient and um and truly uh believe in the company that's making the game yeah. you know mm-hmm. so um let's see dominic i'm gonna go on, go ahead and let you go first what have you been up to gaming wise uh um i mean over on my channel if you want to check it out me and my friend gian we we've been playing super mario world 
Um, mm. The first couple of episodes came out uh, this week, and then there's going to be a second set of episodes coming out next week. Um, I'm no good at Mario. I thought I was growing up. It turns out I wasn't, but I've gotten better. <laughs> you know, if, if it's like any game that can get like an audible response for me whenever I'm about to die, it, it's not a Souls game. It's not Doom. It's not well, insert whatever generic hard game here. It is fucking Mario. Like if I miss a jump, I'm like, God damn, mother- it, it's always <laughs> Mario. It is always platformers like that. <laughs> if you like love watching that too, um, this was last year uh, in September, uh, me and my friend Gian, we tried breaking the world record in Super Mario Bros for um, co-op. Uh, mm-hmm. If you love seeing people fail and just kind of scream at the camera, I mean, I would recommend that one. Is well, because it, it's like uh, it's one button. So if you mess up, it's you. It's on you. Like, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> one could say that Mario is the Dark Souls of platformer. No, it's, don't say that. that. That's yeah, Crash. That's, that's but... Crash Four. No. I was ready to agree, but I don't know anything. <laughs> don't agree with me. I'm being a shit. <laughs> um, so I guess what kind of games do you generally uh, make videos on, or or what's your maybe maybe like even your thought process on that? I mean, it depends. Like, like I would text my friend because, like, I try to vary it with like different people on the channel. But the main is me and my friend Gian, and we've been kind of doing like Mario games just because for um, Switch, those are kind of the games we have shared. Um, when I'm playing with like my brothers, just whatever we have shared, we tried doing Minecraft, but those videos got accidentally deleted. Uh, my fault. Um, <laughs> um, uh, in two weeks. Um, my brothers and I and uh, my best friend Jessica were going to be doing Uno, and that one was a lot of fun. So, look out for that. Um, I know we did um, a Dead by Daylight stream a little a while ago. I don't. It was and that like was fun, months. but yet again, I died a lot. I mean, once was a sacrifice, and it helped you win. It, it is hard to win at that game. Some, I mean, you some got an just like dashingly good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting like me trying to fix like a generator all of a sudden a freaking knife just like straight up like out of a horror movie you're working on something and then a knife just whizzes past your face and lands in the tree right next to you it's and i remember i walked down like what's going on and then you ran and, and then i forget what kind of monster just like attacked me instead we got to get back to that sometime dead by daylight's a it's a good time it is any uh future plans for other videos um it's kind of always up in the air like it, it, de- it depends because um, I'm trying to do a little bit more short films, but that's going to take a while. Um, podcasting wise, um, my podcast that I made last year where we reminisce will be coming back for season two, hopefully in a month or two. I'm starting to record that. But um, as for my Let's Plays, those are kind of like that um, like factory kind of style. Like, OK, I can play this. This is fun. I can edit and it's kind of like streamlined where those videos do come out frequently and I'm also open to anybody who wants to like play and like do something fun for like a mm-hmm. short week. Uh, can you go into your podcast a little bit? Cause I'm going to be honest when I saw that you were posting about it and I checked out a couple of the episodes. Uh, I think that's probably honestly the push that got me to go ahead and get this oh. started. Oh, so, and so the only reason why we're all here and the reason why I have all, all my friends here is because of you. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you want to go and uh, talk about your podcast, um, uh, what it's about and whatnot. Uh, so my podcast Walk is called in. Where We Reminisce. It's basically me going out. Okay, so wait. Let me take a step back. I went to a private school going up, so it was a small class of like 20 to 27 people. So after that, like everyone went their separate ways, stayed in touch with only like a few people. So my podcast, Where We Reminisce, is me going back and catching up with these people, see how they are doing in life and where they plan on going, and just – catching up and creating new memories hopefully down the line that's a freaking beautiful premise yep i love that <laughs> that's actually Thank really you. that's really uh mm-hmm. uh unique it's like a high school reunion without the awkwardness <laughs> <laughs> there's still some awkward times <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no but uh <laughs> sorry you no, I was just going to say, I'm sure like, I'm, yeah, because I can imagine that being somewhat awkward because I, I can imagine you don't mesh well with everyone that you went to school yeah. with. So, yeah, mm-hmm. for as small as a class, it was like there were still like subgroups and everything and and like school stuff, basically kids and mm-hmm. 
I mean, mm-hmm. so like even reaching out, I'm like, are they even going to like remember me or like respond or like, were we close? What, what happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's always I, a shot in the dark, like just I, throwing I, out that text. I will say it is, it, it does suck. I, I had a friend that I had grown, I had grown up with. We, we played on like kid soccer teams before, like we even started kindergarten. Then we were in kindergarten together, first grade, like all, all three elementary knew each other. I shot him a message like a year ago, just like, Hey man, how's it going? I saw you, you got your freaking like law degree. That's awesome. He's just like, who are you? I'm just like, damn. Like I remembered you my entire life. Damn. Fuck me. again. <laughs> you know, cause sometimes I'll like, I'll send a message like on Facebook and I'll see that they read it. I'm like, okay, I see how it is. <laughs> yeah. It's, Literally. I think we have to remember that it's like, it's not necessarily that, it's not necessarily that they decidedly chose to forget you. It's oh, yeah. literally it's, just it's like just life. Some people, some people you give an impression to and they'll remember you their whole lives and other people, you're just uh, basically a blur in the background. Just I mean, NPC. to be, I mean, to be fair, yeah. I think we all have to look inward and realize we've probably done that to millions of other people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hands oh, yeah. down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate that feeling. Like one time I was crossing the street and someone said hi to me, like, Ooh, I'm sorry. Who? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, t- to put it like this, if there was ever like a very attractive person in the hallway, you'd pass by, you thought the world of them, but you weren't even on their blip. Th- Dominic, you were that hot person to someone else and you did the same <laughs> thing with them. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh Lord. My uh, <laughs> but, um, if I, if I could plug something in like really quickly. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but because of like the podcast, it um, it generated like kind of the spinoff of my YouTube channel and doing my Let's Plays because I did an episode uh, with my friend Gian. We played just Switch while we did the podcast. And like half a year later, I texted him like, hey, do you want to do Let's Plays? And we've been doing that for weeks. We see each other now regularly well, over Discord. But before it was like once a year we would say hi to each other, maybe. But now it's like every week we're like getting in touch again. Mm-hmm. That's a good show. And so it, it's been an amazing feeling just like kind of catching up with these people and kind of getting back into each other's lives, even if it's just like a text saying, hey, how's it going once a month instead of like three or four years. I think that's I, I, this, I'm going to try to phrase this in a, an appropriate way and feel free to call me out if I do it shittily. Um, obviously, COVID fucking sucks. Uh, quarantine sucks. Like there's a complete fucking disaster on like every miserable scale in the world. But I, I think there are some small side effect benefits that have come from that, where companies are realizing they don't necessarily need people to be in the office, and it's actually more productive to have people working at home. It's improving people's lives to have like these kind of revelations come at the top. And even as we, had, as I at least mentioned earlier, I'm able to keep. It is incentivized keeping in touch with friends you wouldn't maybe um, normally see in person. Um, my friendship with Corey has sprouted 10 freaking to- fold and I am a happier human being for it. You mean to tell me that people are happier and more productive when they work from home? What the heck? What kind of <laughs> socialist country are you trying to run, Jose? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, comrade. <laughs> no, but I get you, uh, Jose. Like the reason why all like this has started is because like I got let go by my job because of COVID, and it gave me so much free time to start doing stuff like my own stuff that I wanted to do, and it spun off so many other things. And and like um, if you listen to like my season one finale, I recorded with who are my best friends right now, and that was a mess of things. It took like eight times to actually record because i mean things went haywire like every take like it wasn't like script or anything just like as soon as i start someone would say something we're like no you can't this is a more wholesome podcast which created a spinoff which um we're working on hopefully it comes out this year called for the boys which is complete randomness off like we'll say one thing in the beginning and i just let them go sweet (laughs) What is this concept of called wholesome? I don't understand that. Uh, let's 
see. <laughs> Actually, let me mark this down real quick. <laughs> I thought he was going to Google the word wholesome. Oh, no, <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at the definition, shall we? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, geez. Look, I'm a bimbo. I'm not that much of a bimbo. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go ahead and jump into what I've been playing real quick, and I'll try to speed through it. Um, I beat Valhalla. Uh, that game does not respect your time. It is entirely way too long to the to like the active detriment of like I don't enjoy playing this game anymore. The gameplay is not deep enough to justify it, and they do the stupid thing and they they did the same thing with Odyssey where oh you didn't really beat the game you need to track down all these cultists um in this like super convoluted side quest. I'm like dude I don't fucking care. Fuck you. I'm, so it's I'm, I'm a modern done. open world Ubisoft game. Yeah. <laughs> it, open. You mean Breath of the Wild like game? But um, yeah, just just done with Valhalla. You almost had me. You almost had me. You almost had me. Go on, Jose. Um, but yeah, um, my opinion of Valhalla just dropped rapidly with every single hour I put in it, specifically because of just how long it is. It it would have been better as a fifteen hour game. Plus, there's a lot of narrative dissonance with you being a fucking Viking. So. I didn't think it was going to be longer than fifteen hours. That scares me. Oh, it, it's like a hundred plus, and I didn't even Are you do serious? anything. Yeah. It, oh my god. It's long. Um, Remember when you could play as Ezio and finish that campaign in like what, like 12, 14 hours, maybe mm-hmm. twenty? I don't know. Something short. Those were those oh, were good short. times. Uh, um let's see. I'll talk about yeah. Resident Evil two and three some other time. Um You've been streaming I'm, those I'm though, just, haven't you? Yeah. Um I guess I'll go over it real quick. Uh, so Resident Evil 2 is still probably the better of the two uh, Resident Evil remakes, and I especially really I, I know the second run in there is not to the is not as deep as like the B scenarios from the original game where uh, items wouldn't pop up if you grabbed them in one playthrough. Like there'd be different boss encounters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That being said, I like the way that the second run changes things up just enough, especially between characters. Um, where it kind of plays with your expectations, where mm. enemies will be where they weren't before. There's extra jump scares. Like there, there's one particular fake out that happens incredibly early on with Leon, where um, for, in the original game, when you go past this very specific window, a liquor is supposed to go by. And when you play as Leon for the first time in the remake, it's not there. So you're like, oh, did they forget about this? Is it just not there? But sure enough, on the second run where you're already familiar with the game, like that's one of the first divergences that happens and, and it's totally there and it's already in that hallway. Yeah. Um, man, I have, I have a bunch of scattershot notes. Uh, Mr. X. Oh, Mr. X shows up so much earlier in the second run. Is, I and know. It and it doesn't even make it like a <laughs> cutscene. He just pops around a corner and that's so much fucking scary the first time that happened i lost my shit i was uh, like oh we're going oh okay this is what we're doing and uh the second run is really interesting because it's technically shorter than the first run because they reorganize where all the key items are and in such a way that you can actually get through the entire um rcpd the raccoon city police department much faster well, yeah, because like because it's it's yeah, it's supposed to be like the second run character is like just getting there after everything has already hit the fan. Marvin's already a zombie, like you know. So, mm-hmm. like, like <laughs> there's there's some uh, not narrative distance. There's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Inconsistencies, like in terms of plot. Like obviously, Birkin, you're not going to fight him twice in his first form. It it's, it doesn't make sense, but. Yeah, it's actually faster, but you can really screw up your second run if you accidentally run into Mr. X even earlier than you're supposed to. Yep. Um, Claire has the easier playthrough all around. She has a fucking grenade launcher. I need, need I say more? It's better than a shotgun. <laughs> um, apparently in my notes, I put uh, Leon is too focused on being horny for bad girls, but not horny for Claire. <laughs> Because Leon has bad pro Leon is just such a freaking naive, gullible little shit. He is a humble Evil twink. Two. Leave he, him alone. He is like nineteen in Resident Evil Two. Leave him alone. He's a humble but, twink. But 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 he did evolves <laughs> into like the world's biggest fucking chat in Resident Evil Four. He, he really does. Such a 180. He really does. The Virgin RPD Leon, the Chad government agent Leon. <laughs> Leon. <laughs> I, that's, gonna... that's why I'm hoping in the animated series we're gonna we're gonna see some romancing between Leon and Claire. I, there's I'm a gonna, series? I'm I'm gonna gonna coming out, out on Netflix, yeah. I, I will oh, there's multiple that. series, Dom. 
Okay, wait, no, this is another Kingdom Hearts thing, is it? Yes, it is. No, okay, um, hold on. No, it's not. <laughs> Tell him about Survivor. <laughs> um, I also streamed uh, Resident Evil Three. It's it's not it's not like the big mansion, like going around solving puzzles. It's definitely more of like a linear experience. But it's still just a fucking good time. It's it's like such an expertly paced narrative. It also gave us Kimbo of the decade. Yes. Yes. And I have I have Kimbo of the decade. I have played I have played Resident Evil three so many times. I can't even don't don't even get me started on like getting the platinum for that is takes so much grinding and playing on Inferno. It it is it is a Dark Souls fucking final boss. Yeah. And I I and I beat it. And then I failed on the little, what's supposed to be like a quick little quick time event. I fucked that up. So I had to do the whole oh, fight. No. And yeah, it's yeah. Well, the one thing I will say about Resident Evil three is the difficulty jump to that final boss is so fucking unfair. I died so many goddamn times during that final boss and I was on easy and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I'm like, ah, ah. I'm like, it's so unfair. And the game's like, here, you gotta dodge at the exact right fucking moment, and it's I, like... Uh, <laughs> so I was on nightmare mode, and I got to the final boss, and I had, like, I think I had, like, a healing coin and an armor coin in my inventory, and I just, like, he was he was two-shotting me the whole time, and uh, I had to cheat and basically buy all of the unlockable items in the game, because yeah, exactly you can do that, because you can do that, you can buy all the unlockable items, and I'm like... And then that's how I beat Nightmare Mode. <laughs> it, it's how you have to. <laughs> Y'all even got farther than me. I got up to, I think, the se- is it the second or the third Nemesis fight with um, the Acid on Hardcore? Uh-huh. I have not been able to beat that, and I gave up. That was the last time I played Resident Evil 3. Uh, it's okay. You got farther than me. Game. I haven't even bought the game. <laughs> Please do. Please, uh, let's I, I am really actually the lore of Resident Evil does intrigue me, so I am considering. Oh, like, dude, go, yeah. Oh even boy. if it, just, oh, you're in for it. You need to binge. You need to binge Resident Evil because it is the lore is. Mwah. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm just like just looking at the surface. <laughs> I am super intrigued, and also um, seeing the trailer for Village kind of and that vampire lady. Okay, I want what? that wine. I want the wine. <laughs> so do I. I I don't <laughs> drink red because I get migraines, but I would drink that red. That wine is blood. <laughs> uh, minus matter. the blood. Minus the blood. One last okay. note I'll do for Resident Evil 3. Jill is a fucking bad like the entire game oh, she's she getting, like she's she is. flung across there's explosions. She picks oh, up a great. fucking rail gun and she she's, jams I it in Nemesis's yeah. mouth and blows him up. She she Jill is literally Jill robbed great. She's she's robbed of like the acclaim that she deserves because oh, she's yeah. put she's put into la- lackluster titles. Mm-hmm. She was not done justice in Resident Evil Five. Yeah. No. Oh God. Okay, I, mm. um, I think I'll go ahead and save the rest of my stuff for next time, though. I pass the magic conch to Blaine. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, I haven't been playing that much. I mean, Sarah, when did we play? together that was the week that was a couple days ago and that was actually a lot of fun that was a lot of fun i mean uh my 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 contractual ob- contractually obligated fuck ubisoft i fucking hate that yeah. i will never stream yeah. any of their games and promote it on my social media but that being said um no that was fun i got to meet mm. sarah's friend holden and she was fantastic um uh i played Do you just lot. just sorry what? the one thing i'll say about siege is it's the one game i have ever played multiplayer game we're losing yeah i get like oh what the fuck but like i'm never like 100 percent angry at losing because oh, yeah. i always know why either i did bad or like you we watch somebody else play not like p- other people doing bad but it's like you know why you lost and you're not angry uh, uh, about it it's one of the few multiplayer games that i'll actually watch the kill cams if i'm not like crunched for time and whatever in the match because i actually do want to see how did i fuck up yeah yeah. Um, it's like you want to get actively better and it doesn't make you mad when you die i mean obviously it makes you mad but like you're over it within five seconds because you're like oh that was my fault <laughs> um but yeah no like i've been playing a lot of stardew valley because i was doing i did a podcast with a friend of mine becca valentine called cozy wood kitchen uh where she ha- she comes up with or finds a recipe for food related to the game um 
she makes it. We talk about the game and we talked about Sturdy Valley and how much we love that game. Um, I've been just sinking my teeth into the, I, I mean, I talked about this the last time I was on game session, but like, um, it, it, I've just been stuck playing more of it since I was playing it to get in ready for that podcast. I haven't been able to put it back down for my very long until I, uh, got in my PlayStation Sony battle that Jose mentioned earlier, where I've been trying to buy legacy of Kane blood Omen for ps1 for days and today it finally worked i played it for about five minutes i will go back to it but oh my god that that is an old ass game that is a that is a ps1 early ps1 era game i have i have that game uh in my steam library it's not installed but i do have it (laughs) it's it's worth taking a look it's just rough yeah (laughs) um uh like if like like man, we can we can poke fun at the fact that Blood has like a really janky opening cutscene, and, and I won't say poorly aged because they knew that shit looked bad when they did it, and they had fun with it. So I don't count that as bad. I think that's like good. Um, but Legacy of Cain is I don't know what it's doing. It's like being violent and it's interesting, but whatever. Um, but you can't put it on Vita, I guess, because Sony doesn't want you to play that game on the Vita for whatever fucking. Um. But yeah, and after that, I actually spent. I I, I started rewatching the uh, the Beard Brothers playthrough of Enter the Gungeon from two years ago, and I just haven't been able to stop playing uh, Enter the Gungeon today until actually pretty shortly before this podcast. It's one of my favorite fucking games, and it reminds me how much I love Bullet Hells, even if I'm not very good at most Bullet Hells. Have you played? Uh, it's on Steam. It's incredibly cheap. Have you played Devil Daggers by any chance? I own it. I haven't turned it on uh, yet. But please I know I play to, I know Devil I Daggers. Play. It's incredibly difficult. It's this awesome, like Doom Quake graphic level bullet hell, and it has all these like gnarly skull enemies that come at you. It's I'm fucking gonna. hard. But it's so much fun, and you will lose literally hours upon hours because after every death, you're like, "I gotta keep going, gotta keep going, gotta keep going." Like it's literally like constant. Plus, it's always incredibly cheap, and you said you own it, which is which is great. But yeah. people who, who don't, it's always incredibly cheap. It's super simplistic, nothing crazy. It's just a lot of fun. Nice. And that's pretty much it. I haven't been playing a whole lot else. Sarah, what have you been up to? So. Uh, 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 first of all, I want to push something really fast for those who are into like really old horror horror games. Onion Games, which is the team behind Rule of Rose, just posted like a thing on Twitter saying that they saying like, "Oh, do you want us to re to remaster some of our old games? Fill out the survey and let us know." Are you serious? So, yes. Not That's even shitting you. They just posted this. So if you want them to somehow do a Rule of Rose remaster, please, full of God, because that game is fucking expensive if you're trying to buy it. Um, oh my God, fill that out. Cry. Let them know that you want that game. Uh, but any, Look up the fucking any value anyway. Right now. Sorry, go on. No, 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 it's fine. I just wanted to push that because like, I saw it on Twitter. I retweeted it, so you should find it, Blaine. Um, I'm going to. What about <laughs> play? Uh I started Sayonara Wild Hearts on the Switch today, and oh my god, why is it taking me that long to play that that game? I'm madly in love with it. I'm going to try to beat it within the next couple of days. Uh, what have I recently been playing that I'm really hyped about is I purchased a box copy of The Darkness for Xbox 360 because I loved that game as a kid. It actually got me to start reading comics, and I found out it was backwards compatible. So I bought a box copy of it, and I went to play it on my Series X. And for context, I have my Series X looking like a tower. It's not like sideways, it's looking like a tower. Put the disc in, Series X doesn't read the disc. I'm like, huh, this is this is very strange. So I go to put it in again. Again, again, again. What the fuck's happening? Google Series X not reading discs. You need to turn it sideways. Because it can't read a disc when it's standing up. <laughs> so I had to turn my Series X sideways and i put in the disc and i, I hear the disc spinning noise and it works and i, I go no that was the thing well, yes neither did i 
So I had to literally have my Series X this fugly fucking brick just to play like I did five minutes. I did like 50 minutes of Shadows of the Damned first. Wow, that game's gunplay is not good, but the rest of that game is a lot of fun. And I really like yeah, that game. Rough. And I love that game a lot. Uh yeah, now I game appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, gameplay doesn't hold up really, really great. That's why I hope the rumors of a remaster are true, because I hope they do like quality of life stuff to it. But like it's so stylish and it's also like a game made by like some of the three biggest Japanese developers ever, and it totally shows because you can tell that that they just went absolutely crazy in the best way pos- uh, possible. Um, and then I did like an hour of the darkness, and that's like early Xbox 360. It's a very acquired taste. It's very, very odd now that I replay it again, and I'm like, wow, this game is weird. But like, I love it with all my heart and soul, and you never get bored of being able to eat your enemies' hearts. How is it compared yeah. to the Darkness 2? Because I've only ever played Darkness 2, and so, it's one of my favorite shooters to play. Uh, so the first one's incredibly, like, imagine like an early 360 shooter to where you, oh, no. you're, you're not running, you're like sliding across the ground, and you're playing as like this really emo, like 21-year-old mafia man who like ends up getting this like ancient eldritch evil taking him over and you can eat people's hearts and it's really <laughs> fun. The aesthetic um, is also totally different. Um, yeah, I think they're the both equally totally good different. for different reasons. Yeah, exactly. Blaine just totally did it. The first one's good in the fact that it was doing something different, turning a comic book into a video game. And the second one's great on its own right because it excels on what the first one did. And I posted that I was like half asleep while I was playing it. I was like glazed over. And I ended up taping this like 30 second Twitter video where I just was like talking about how sad I am that we never got uh, uh, Darkness 3 because the second game had an ending that hinted that they were going towards like other characters in the comic book universe that the darkness is in. And I would have literally lost my shit. So I did this like 30 second, like half asleep glazed over rant where I'm like, why did we never get this? As I'm like staring off in his face. Huh? I need to look that up later. Yeah, please do. Or else I'll just like link it to you because I don't remember taping it. And I saw it on my Twitter and I was like, wait, what? Can I interrupt you? Uh, I'd like to play a little game with the pot. Go. I want everyone to, I want everyone to guess how much they think the loose price is for Rule of Rose. Loose is just the disc, nothing else. $300 Three hundred dollars. Oh, wrong. Uh, I'm gonna do one fifty. Still wrong, but four twenty. Wrong, Jose. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know what the game's about. Uh, but based off the fact that it seems to be that expensive, what I'm gonna guess, um, nine seventy five. So uh, the loose price is two hundred and eighty-one. No, who said three hundred? Sarah. Uh, I said like two hundred. I think I did. I think you said three hundred, but like oh, so I don't remember what I said, I think, but I was the closest. I think Corey was the closest without going over uh, that or no. Sarah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> the the loose is two eighty one eighty six. I'm using a uh, pricecharting dot com. Really, really good website because it aggregates like all online sales or oh, i guess it just has spiders that go out and like check that on search engines um and it it <laughs> does give you an actual it's like it's the best way i've found for valuing old games and shit that you have um the complete in box price is 501 and 7 cents brand new like sealed 1026 dollars so i was close sense you you were <laughs> So yeah, please at least ask uh, for graded, which I don't care in. about because grading is stupid is three thousand. Oh yeah, so but yeah, um yeah, I just wanted to go back and play some some games that like incredibly like moved me to who I am today. And it's weird saying the darkness moved me to who I am today, but it was honest to God the game that got me to start reading comics. Cause I had no idea that the darkness was based off a comic until I played it and it's something like, based off a of comic by so and so and i was like this is a comic it's a very weird comic it's a very strange comic it's a very 90s comic fun seeing how there was the comic that was like basically the comic the game and had the same aesthetic of the first game and then the mark sylvester yeah. like, comics that are like yeah. totally different aesthetically but still have the same <laughs> basic idea yeah like it's super interesting and 
it, again, I, I'm going to play the, I'm going to play Darkness 2 after I beat this one. I, I have it on Steam so I can just download it and play it. But it's like those games were so of their era and like of their time for like all the little like weird shit in it. I'm, I'm still loving it because I'm like, they were able to get away with this. And like, it's just, it's such a blast. And it's so great to relive games that I cared about when I was a kid and they're still great. Like, I remember so I'm just having a demo to... for the first one at New York Comic Con before it came out. Come yeah, out it's 2005 or 2004 or something. Don't don't ask me to explain to you the artifacts verse because I'll be here forever, and it's one of my favorite comic books, like comic book you know you know verses ever. Um, but but yeah, I mean, other than that, I um, oh, I've been playing Persona Five Strikers. How the fuck could I forget that? Uh, really quick. That's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not as muso as people made it out to be. It's literally Persona 5, but the combat is muso combat. Mm. And it's it's incredibly well done. It's a lot of fun. I'm playing it on PlayStation 5, so apparently it runs at 60 F- FPS on PlayStation 5. Um, I missed those kids. <laughs> that's, all, that's what I'll mostly say, is I didn't realize how much I missed the cast of Persona 5 until I started playing Strikers. And I was like, oh my god, I miss these kids so much. Um, but that's a lot of fun. Uh, I started playing Control again, because I can run Control with Ray with ray Tracing. And Control's just really good. Please fucking play Control. For the love of god, you have literally until midnight tonight to pick it I up. I did know that. Netflix. Control like, is a phenomenal game. And it connects right. with Alan Wake, by the way, which if you love so, Alan Wake, like I do... It connects with the entire Remedyverse, by the way. So yeah, not the just entire Alan Wake, the Remedyverse. Matt Quantum... Pain. Quantum break. break, right? Yeah. Quantum break. Quantum I, break. It, it even connects with Max Payne, even though they don't own the rights to it. I just yeah. wish I enjoyed. Yeah, that's con- true. I just wish I enjoyed Control as but everyone. That's else fine. Did. That's but we're fine. also, but we're also, we're, we're most likely getting, we're most likely getting another Alan Wake game, which is why I'm I hope so, so stoked. I, I, I hope still so. think Alan Wake's mm-hmm. the best game they've ever made. So yeah, yeah. like it. Control's just really good. Uh, please play Control, and I like that I can run Control, and that whenever I pause the game, it doesn't slow the game down to like five frames per second oh my anymore. God, yeah, it, has it feels of- so good. It feels so good. I can pause it. I can like exit through an area, and it won't again like freeze to like six FPS. Like it's like it feels every great. time you had to hit the brakes on your car, you were forced to hit the brakes, put the parking brake on, turn the yep. car off, turn the car back on, undo the parking brake, and then go. You feared pausing the game, which was never a fun thing. It sucked. Uh, let's you see. We got, we, got to, we got to get wrapped yeah. up soon. Corey, yeah, did Corey, you want to go over Corey, what you've been Corey up to? Um, I apologize for the grinding in the background. Uh, my roommates are making smoothies right now. Ooh, um, sounds like a Friday night. <laughs> I made smoothies this morning. <laughs> so uh, what have I been playing? A lot of Valheim. A lot of Valheim. <laughs> exactly I, uh, that I've heard people saying is Minecraft. It's Viking Minecraft. Okay. <laughs> and, I was uh, like, what the fuck is Valve? It blew up literally overnight. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Is? Over 4 million players in like a week or two. Jesus. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. So it's a good game and it's only 40% done. Um. Hmm. With that said, I have built so many houses in that game already, and I I think this game has awakened my inner, like, architecturist, because I found myself actually looking up videos on, like, how to build proper chimneys, how to build a house with a cellar, how to build this, how to build that, and I just, like... I have spent... There have been a couple days where I literally just spent all day playing on on Valheim. Just, Just all day, you know, my entire day, gone. You know, so <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> um, but, to... but I'm having a lot of fun because I I also got invited into a server with a bunch of Australian people. And, oh hell yeah, that's and, always a fun a fun time. So like, <clears throat> and they're delightful people. They are delightful people. Some of them are streamers and everything. And like, I it it sucks. Because when they're like at a decent time, like 6 p.m. over there, it's already 11 p.m. over here. So I've had nights where I've stayed up till like three or four in the morning because I was playing Valheim with them or I was watching their stream. So, <laughs> but yeah, besides that, I think, uh, 
I'm almost done with Spirit Fairer on my stream, which I'm excited to I'm excited to finish. Um, and I'm also still running through the first Ori game, so I'm excited to finish both of those. Ori two is even better. That's why I keep hearing. So I'm excited to play that. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. I've never played those, but I've been told I need to. Beautiful soundtrack, by the way. Absolutely beautiful soundtrack. Also, just visually beautiful as well. Oh yeah, yeah. everything stuff. about that game. Is it? I think it runs at native 120. If you have a Series X, Ooh. is it one of those games that like uses 2D graphics but like blends them in with three, or is it actually like three dimensional graphics and they just? Blend I'm not I, sure. I think I I think it is uh the uh, the like enemies and the avatars and see, even some of the scenery is like is like three dimensional, but then like the backgrounds are two dimensional. And it's all just blended together. Like it's all blended together. Yeah, it's like it, it's and it's like it's a layered. side scroller, so it's like, you know, yeah. All right, I think that's going to go ahead and do it for the show. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you for everyone on the show, uh, spending their time here. Um, every, everyone's showing their heart on on, on stream. Well, I'm showing okay. my kingdom hearts. I hate hey! you. Uh, Speaking of which, so I'm looking at the um, oh dear god, map oh, game. No. so how convoluted is this? <laughs> oh boy, we'll talk yeah. off stream about that. Yeah, we'll talk <laughs> off right. No, 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 oh, three hour stream. Let's do it. Oh, anyway, uh, we're going to give the spiel. Uh, game session is uh, recorded live here on Twitch at 6:30 p.m. PST on Sundays. Um, best place to keep up to date with everyone here is on Twitter. All of our ads are on screen. They're also going to be in the descriptions. Uh, Game Session Podcast in its entirety is available on podcast services as well as on YouTube with individual cut-up segments on YouTube for easier <laughs> digestion. I stream games here on Twitch kind of whenever I feel like it. You can find updates on all that over on Twitter. Um, and I also have a Patreon now, so... You can go ahead and support me and the show there. Uh, big shout out to both Sly and Ramen Nomad for being the first two patrons. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you for everyone being here. Any, any last words on anything? Not Kingdom Hearts uh, related? <laughs> well, no, but really, but really, really quick. Uh, I The one secret I've been teasing for like a really long time now should be going up this this week. So I'll okay. be... Nice. If, 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 if people can watch my Twitter and other things i would yes. be, I'd be very very happy so um and there are also things in the background uh with my stream that are excuse me that are happening uh probably in the next stop dabbing or i will smack you <laughs> <laughs> i will smack you he will smack blaine, you blaine, is no. the blaine. What? what blaine i have sore shoulders i'm not against Can striking a bitch a- rub her shoulders <laughs> i'm not against striking a woman okay <laughs> Oh my God. Shoulders? God. <laughs> I'm oh. kidding. I'm totally kidding. I would never. I'm calling you out I would on never. Twitter right now. Oh, I'm canceled. That's it. This is it. I'm canceled. <laughs> I'm gonna call Mark. We're gonna get. We're gonna get Corey on canceled camera. <laughs> and, Anyways, uh, there are things happening in the backgrounds for my stream. I can't say anything yet because it's not all put together. But I will launch probably, hopefully, in the next few weeks, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> and I really hope you guys like it. So. I was dabbing, by the way. I know you were. <laughs> how about uh, how about you, Blaine? You want to direct people towards the uh, the food thing that you're done with, uh, Rebecca? Yeah, yeah. Uh, her, the Twitter is Cozywood Kitchen. Okay, or Cozywood Kitchen. I'm tired. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay. No, no. Twitter, cooperate. It's Cozywood Kitchen is the podcast. Uh, Rebecca Valentine, Duck Valentine on Twitter. Um, you know, uh, she's a journalist, a writer, and uh, we can't. And um, it's a great podcast about making recipes, talking to people about games they love. Um, she she puts a lot of work into it, and I do think you should check it. Even if you don't give a shit about like what I have to say about Stardew Valley, you should you should still check it out just for her awesome recipes that she either finds and credits or puts together and whatnot. I'm just trying to yeah, it's just Cozywood Kitchen is the you is the is the at at Cozywood Kitchen, and then Cozywood Kitchen at is the name of the podcast. Um, aside from that, the only thing else I have to plug or say is um adult. Pokemon fans can't read. <laughs> and uh, and we circle back. You have heard it here first. Adult Pokemon fans cannot read. And uh, before oh, I go in and let you go, Dom, I just want to go and say thanks for uh, coming on the show. Thanks for being the inspiration in the first place. Thanks, and, uh, Dom. Much love to you. Thank you for having me. This is such a blast. Us, 
<laughs> no, thank you so much for having me on. Like, I mean, and thanks for like bearing with me for like the lack of knowledge that I have. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about some other time about sports video games, please bring me back. <laughs> I, I am not good at sports. I will have to do, do wrestling video games count as sports. I want to say yes, but I haven't played them. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you want to go ahead and plug your stuff for you? I kind of already did earlier, so I, I don't you, want yeah, to sound yeah. redundant. You got to take every opportunity you can. Be as redundant nah, as I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Besides, everything will probably be linked later, right? Oh, yes. I, yeah, we then, got you. yeah, no, we I, got I you. said it once. If the people miss it, that's on them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They can rewind. That's, um, that's going to be the episode. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.